Um, we have a traffic light system here for when it's time to speak. Um, the officers will introduce the report, and when that's finished, um, whoever wishes to speak as an objector has said uh, three minutes. And once the objectives have spoken, if the agent wants to respond, that's their opportunity, and the agent will have the equal amount of time to the amount that the objectors have been given. When that's uh, finished, then officers will pick up any questions that have been raised during that uh, discussion, and then it moves to members. Once it moves to members, um, there is no more opportunity for members of the public to speak. It's then uh, for members to ask questions and then for them to make comments on the report, and then a decision will be taken on each of the agenda items tonight. Um, we try to um, take into account the number of people present in terms of the way we order the agenda. And so tonight we will be taking item 5, 141, the Broadway first, uh, then item 11, which is Willington School, then item 7, 59, Colwood Gardens, number 9, which is 43, Lancaster Road, number 6, which is 96, Church Road, and number eight, um, 110 Gladstone Road, and number 10, which is um, 30 to 40 Lynx Avenue. So we will be uh, looking, first of all, at agenda item five, um, and I'll pass over to Tim. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, by introduction, the application was deferred at the April Planning Committee meeting this year for officers to clarify whether the proposals had been to the design re review panel or not. Um, as outlined on pages 26 to 30 of your agenda, uh, the design review panel reviewed a pre-application proposal. Uh, this went on three separate occasions. Uh, officers have outlined the notes from these meetings in the committee report. The current planning application has not been to the design review panel. However, a number of amendments have been sought to improve the proposal and satisfy the council's urban design officer. Since the April committee meeting, a fresh set of amended plans have been received and reconsulted on with third parties. This followed the applicants having provided proposed levels of building in relation to neighbouring office building. So the application, application site itself is on the south side of the Broadway within South Centre Wimbledon. The site comprises a restaurant on the ground floor with residential and storage above. The site surroundings comprise a mixture of commercial and residential properties. In terms of the proposal itself, for the demolition of the first and second floors and remodelling the ground floor restaurant section and erection of six new floors above to create 20 residential flats. The flats comprise a mix of 10 one-bed units and 10 two-bed units. The main external material to the building will be yellow facing bricked elevations and glazing. The top floor would have glazing and be set back from the main front brick facade. The ground floor restaurant would also have a redesigned frontage, keeping it as a restaurant. Um, during the application, officers sought improvements during the course, uh, which include removal of larger front glazed balconies and replacement with smaller, more uniform balconies. So members, just talk you through the plans. Uh, this is the proposed uh, ground floor layout. Um, there's currently access to the down the side of the building here, which would remain. Um, entrance to the building to the flats would be on the side here. So looking at first floor, going through the floors. Um, so there's a, the plan of the, the layout, um, it does leave a, uh, you could call it a courtyard gap in the middle. Um, so I we'll have three flats at the front here, three flats at the back, first floor level, and again at second floor level with the, largely the hallway, lift, circulation space, staircase uh, in the centre breaking the two. Um, so going through the floor plan, second, sorry, level three, level four. So at level four, it starts to slightly set back at the back. Level five, set back further. And then top floor, there is a top floor two bed flat at the front of the, uh, of the building. Uh, roof plan, uh, these are solar panels proposed on the roof. In terms of the elevations, um, so if you see them in, in colour, the, this is the proposed front elevation. Um, that's the neighbouring office building that's there. Um, so you'll see mainly a 
a brick facade with uniform balconies to the front. Uh, the top, very top floor is set back of different materials, so mainly glazing. At the back here as well, balconies proposed. To the side of the building, so this is the front which would face um, the Broadway. And at the back, you can see the, I referred to earlier about the building stepping back as you go up the floors. And the other side, um, again the front here. Uh, the windows on the back here, these ones which serve some of the flats, um, would be obscurely glazed, whereas these, um, the glass here actually would be clear for the for the stairwell. Um, the obscure glazing and the screening on the back here is to assist with neighbouring amenity to the existing residence to the west. Um, proposed planting plan, so they are proposing some planting here. Um, two birch trees are proposed out the front as well and some soft landscaping at the back. And just some close-up detailing of, the, of some of the balconies proposed. Turn to some site pictures. Um, in fact, this building on the left here has been completed now, which is the Premier Inn. Um, but that's the office building there. The site is just here. This is the site, office building next door. Uh, residential units to the right as well. Um, just to help put it in context where it is. This is taken from the west, looking down the side. Um, access flow to the right of me is residential <coughs> properties um, which form uh, down that street. You can see the site here with the office building behind. And just a further view down the Broadway. Uh, the 3D visual um, hasn't come up hugely great, but um, that's just to help put it into a bit of context for you. Um, within the streets, within the current street scene. Um, you'll see the mod sheet. Um, we've had an additional representation since the production of the agenda. Um, overall members, the proposal seems to sit comfortably on the site, which not call harm to the character of the area of surrounding amenities. The scheme follows two previous schemes. The current proposal provides for a better design with a loss of grey external cladding Although the scheme would be more flats than the previous schemes, none of these would be secured as full housing. The application has been subject to extensive viability review by the Council's independent consultants who have confirmed no full housing can be secured on site. Officers therefore recommend permission be granted, subject to conditions in legal agreement to secure the heads term set out in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. The traffic light system works so that when it goes to amber, there is one minute left. So when that goes to amber, it's really helpful before it goes to red, if you would recognise your time is up. <laughs> Otherwise, I will have to, to ask you to stop speaking. So we have um, Sarah Sharp wishing to speak first. OK, so Lee, Lee and um, Jane are sharing. Yes. Yes. Start. OK, who's going first? Jane. I am. Okay. Yep. I'm got one minute. <laughs> um, I want to explain that the landscape proposal is not sustainable. Uh, birch trees loved by architects as they don't mask their buildings are surface rooted and short lived. Better species would give greater visual impact in the barren street. Inadequate space has been allowed here for two small trees as cheap as chips. Uh, which will be constrained in raised planters that will limit their life. Narrow shrub and perennial borders along the access route will be on the west side of a seven-storey building and therefore in deep shade. Yet sun-loving plants have been specified and labelled sensory planter. Labelled to sound beneficial, this is horticultural ignorance and amounts only to a box ticking exercise. Planners should require developers to produce credible schemes, allow trees space to thrive and resist overdevelopment. I ask as a minimum that an improved landscape plan be required. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi there. I um, would like to talk more about the planning side of it. Uh, a lot of you will have seen the green coffee checklist for sustainable buildings. This was first developed for the YMCA way back when, when they first started talking about regeneration there. And we have contributed a great deal to, to that um, process. This is how to recognize and approve better buildings. It was done by local professionals and environmentalists, and we are using it to urge the council PAC members to provide better, more sustainable homes and offices for the people here. I have to ask why this application does not include even one of the concepts outlined in design or construction of this proposed building. It still looks like a two stacks of shoe boxes, no imagination, no creativity, no delight. That is because the proposal was written many years ago. It's backward looking. In the past, it's designed not for today, not for Wimbledon, and certainly not for the challenging future we face. We voted a climate emergency. We ask the applicant to return with a future looking proposal, low energy or even, gosh, zero carbon, endorsed by the police, designing out crime that's absent in this proposal. It set amidst greenery with good design, distinctive and respectful of brand Wimbledon. And Wimbledon sets a standard for the country. I think when the tennis was on, they used the phrase in pursuit of excellence. And that is something that pervades everything about Wimbledon. Please vote against this application. The applicant's a local resident, or sorry, the owner is a local resident, a developer, a very wealth, wealthy man. Ask him to return with a well-designed quality building that he'll be proud of and give us six affordable homes for teachers, care workers, and police. Thank you very much. Um, so I've Manly and Sandy. Completely forgot you, sorry. <laughs> Chair, on balance, these plans must be rejected. We lose out on design, on designing out crime, on sustainability and on affordable housing. The DRP, the entrance to the residential flats is on the side of the alleyway. This is poor design. It sets a dangerous set precedent. The DRP has twice and the police have now asked for the entrance to be relocated to the front or flush with the front to enhance natural surveillance and ensure the safety of residents. Two years on, many amendments later, this has still not happened. Why not? The DRP gave an amber rating for this application, not a near green as claimed by the applicant during the April PAC. There is an incorrect statement, just as there was an incorrect statement for two years regarding the elevations of this application when it went to planning again in April. The design and access statement says the entrance of the residence lift area is within pedestrian traffic flow. It suggests it's to the front of the street. This is absolutely not the case. It is 13 metres along the alleyway. This has been highlighted by the Met and in drawings. And although it may be easy for you to be misled because they drew the people closer to the front end of the building. Where's the mobility and access policy? There, where's the entrance and movement towards uh, the entrance of the alley? How can it be secure at night time? Wimbledon is in a cumulative uh, impact zone. It's had more than 500 violent crimes, including sexual offences. All of them, 46, more than 46% in the public realm. And yet, despite many amendments, two years on of designing, the applicant still ignores two requests by the DRP and now the Met Police that the residential entrance is to be at the front of the development or flush with the front and not 13 metres down the alleyway. This is not right. This is poor design. There's no separation between commercial waste and recycling and the residential. There's rear uh, access from the commercial to the residential entry point. There is no servicing or loading plans for the restaurant. Where's it going to go? This is currently happening in the alleyway uh, where, where they propose to put the entrance of the, of the residential area. The balconies at the front with the CIPD, the officer says they've made some amendments. Only 20 centimetres shorter. This is not a proper amendment. They jut out, they cause intrusive overlooking to the office and to the new residents. Uh, it's very visible from the conservation area, and yet, despite the amendments, the applicant hasn't supplied this. This, is, this affects DMD2, DMD4. Um, designing out crime is a material consideration. 
um, CS14, the London plan, and the revised NPPF, which this um, pack seems to ignore every single time. It is new planning policy and must be taken into consideration. Affordable housing, I would rather stay with the extant application which offers six units in clawback than to have this poor excuse of a, of a, of a building which offers absolutely none. The applicant is, um, is an owner of multi-billion pounds worth of real estate around London and I hope you are not too scared. Call on Peter Manley and are you sharing with Sandeep? Are you Sorry. are you having three minutes each? Thanks, Chair. Um, as has been indicated, the scheme was uh, deferred in April to establish, in principle, two uh, matters: the DRP history and to allow clear ideas to why there was no affordable housing with this scheme given the contribution for the 16-unit scheme permitted a few years ago. Um, the housing, affordable housing matter is relatively straightforward. Um, there is no contribution for this scheme as build costs are obviously more for a larger scheme. There is conjecture as to what the increase in build costs will be, but nevertheless, there will be an increase in build costs. Sales values have, as we all know, decreased over the last three or four years. We saw the news, oh, a lot of you would have seen the news. Last night, sales values will not reach those that were anticipated three or four years ago. Hence, there is no fall of housing with, with this scheme. In terms of design, the officer's report outlines that at pre-application stage, the scheme went before DRP three times. The last of these in April 2016, when an amber light was given. The officer correctly notes in his report that an amber does not preclude planning permission being granted. Um, nevertheless, since that date and the submission of the application, um, we've worked closely with the case officer and the design officer to iron out outstanding design issues. Um, we've also addressed some of the issues that were raised at April's uh, committee meeting. These include an accurate representation of the levels compared to the CIPD building, um, a more vertical emphasis, uh, landscaping to the front, and I take on board what uh, the lady said earlier, there's a condition in regards to landscaping. We're more than happy to go with anything that she thinks would be more appropriate. Um, there's Glazed balconies has been worked onto the glazed balconies and to the recessed brickwork. Um, more detailed drawings have been provided of the facade, which uh, allow a greater appreciation of what's going to uh, what's going to appear there. Um, at April's planning committee meeting, there was discussion about possible refusal on design grounds. Um, I would simply wish to highlight the extant planning permission. Um, that exists on this site, and, and the fact that there has, since that permission was granted, been almost three years of discussion with the case officer and the council's design officer um, to improve the design. It would therefore be a lo an illogical route to go down, um, in, in my view. Um, I therefore ask that members acknowledge the work that's gone into the application uh, and resolve to approve planning permission in accordance with the recommendation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, Peter has said most of the points I want to say. I'll just respond to the checklist uh, that has been raised by the objectors. Um, I'd like to point out that we do have solar PV panels. They are on the roof plan and they're part of the energy strategy. The energy strategy is looking to have a 35% reduction in carbon uh, emissions from the building regs. The solar water panels, uh, as well as ground source heat pumps, have been looked at an option for the site, but it does not lend itself to that type of technology. The insulation of the building is actually higher than required to make sure that we actually try and have a uh, quite airtight and insulated box as they look for as well. Um, there is also points about 
re uh, rainwater recycling and, and, and those, those matters are also looked at as part of most of the design uh, and as part of any condition. We also expect to have a five liters per second discharge rate from the site and if that means it's going to be attenuation tanks, that would be something that would be look at, look at and if that's green roofs, that would also be looked at. But that would be looked at a holistic strategy for the building. Um, there is also a point whereby they have uh, mentioned about the um, acoustic ratings and, and the like for the building. The building has already had an acoustic report done and uh, we would expect to have mechanical ventilation systems so as to allow the building to still be ventilated while wind windows are closed uh, so to actually have the right acoustic environment internally for occupants. Thank you very much. Just pick up on a few things, um, Chair. The, the, there are trees proposed at the front now. Um, the trees proposed are birch trees. The beh reason behind that was for air quality purposes. Um, the site is, is clearly an uh, urban environment, is limited in terms of landscaping that you can do. Um, we have put on landscaping condition, which can be reviewed by our tree landscape officer when they submit the details to us. Um, the proposal has been reviewed by our climate climate change officers as well, um, so they're satisfied as meets the Merton um, policy requirements and the required um, offset contribution is to be secured within the Section 106 agreement. Um, in terms of design of the building, the, the previous scheme for 16 units um, approved was similar in a sense that it made use of exposed brick um, and some front balconies, um, similar with the access to the building as well. Um, but we have put on the conditions regarding um, secure by design and the details of those will be sent to the um, secure by design officer um, upon submission. Um, hope this helps. Thank you. Questions please. Councillor Lanning. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, the first is around sort of the commercial use and where um, the waste would be cited. I know that this was mentioned in by a public comment, but I don't think that's been addressed as to where there would be provision for that waste to, to sit. Um, secondly, I don't think it clarifies in the papers what the projection of the balcony is now. I know it's gone back and forth. so. If you could clarify that, um, that would be great. Um, and I also had a question just generally around um, the commercial versus residential use. Um, the design officer, the previous comments suggest that the chosen land of residential um, is challenging because it's predominantly sort of commercial use and makes the case around the impact on privacy, which the DRP echoes. So I just wondered how we can overcome this issue around privacy when it seems that actually the balconies are quite dominant. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of the projecting balconies, the distance, so bear with me. I believe they're one and a half meters, but I can confirm that um, a bit later on. I can't zoom in at the moment with this. Um, but I believe they're one and a half metres in depth at the front. Um, in terms of privacy and the relationship to commercial occupiers, um, yes, in the, in the town centre there is um, neighbouring commercial building, but there's also residential around it as well. Um, what they're doing at the back, they're having the um, privacy screens on the sides of the rear balconies um, to assist when people are using those balconies to assist with overlooking towards to the, to the west. Um, so the screens are proposed on there um, and they are secured by condition. Further, I mentioned in my presentation earlier that the secondary windows um, at this part of the building on this side um, would be obscurely glazed to assist with, with this relationship. Um, the stairwell would not, be would not be obscurely glazed. This area here is a, is a car park at the moment and the garden spaces are here and in here going this way. Uh, in, in terms of the commercial use, the 
commercial use is not not to change in terms of servicing, which is which is downside. Um, so as far as I understand, the, the commercial waste um, will be put out as existing. Um, so, um, yeah. So, so. If, could I? Could I just come back on that? Does it? Is there any overlap between the residential sort of use and the commercial then? Um, because I know that there's there's a point made, I think, by the design officer that there should be no mix or merging of those two uses. But does that risk there being so? As far as I'm aware, there is. This is to be shared space down the side here between both of those uses. Thank you, Chair. Um, just looking at the sort of fairly extensive section of the recommendations from the Met on uh, designing out crimes, I notice at the end uh, there is a requirement that it should uh, qualify for a uh, Secure by Design final certificate. Can I just ask, would all of the recommendations of the Met need to be fulfilled. Uh, in particular, I'm looking at this point about their recommendation that the door be oriented to the front rather than the side. Would the building be certificated if that were not the case? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, what we'll be looking to do would be to, to, you know, to see if they can, can address those issues with the, um, with the secure by design. So we're looking for measures um, obviously, such as a CCTV installation, um, but those uh, those are the conditions we have put on. So, um, when we consult the the relevant officer, um, the Met Police, and um, if they come back uh, objecting, then that condition won't be able to be satisfied. Um, but we believe, given the, the, the planning history of the scheme, so the 16-unit scheme, the say it was the same setup in terms of access. Um, it would be difficult for us to enforce that. All, every single one of those things should be complied with. Um, so, um, but yeah, we've put the condition on so that we can, we can get some of the measures at least. <coughs> My question is also on waste, waste management. I think you touched on it in the answer to your first question, but are you satisfied that you know, adequate provisions are made for the disposal of waste? in the middle of um, Wimbledon Town Centre? Um, yes, we are, yeah. So the waste provision down here um, to the side of the building, there is, there is some reasonably decent space down here should more be required. Um, but yeah, we're, we're satisfied that the waste can be, can be catered for. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been looking here concerning um, access for disability. Is there any disability access anywhere? Uh, in terms of access, so it's, it's level access um, through to the entrance and they're, they're putting in a lift to all floors. Um, so that, that provides the disabled access. Um, for this particular site, we haven't sought disabled parking space given the limitations of the, the size of the site. Uh, the existing restaurant and servicing access arrangements. Um, so it, it, in this case, we can't, um, we can't put an on-site disabled parking space um, for that reason. Um, thank you. On the drawing you've got up there, um, that um, looking to the left of where the, the main access is to the, the stairwell and the lifts, the, that nearly where your pointer is, the, between the darker shaded area and the striped area at the front. Um, is that just going to be open access for anyone to walk in or will there be some kind of security door or gate at that point, that point, exactly there? Yes. Um, as far as I'm aware, it is to be a gated access. So residents and the um, restaurant uh, operators could, uh, could use it. Got 
two questions. Um, how close is the entrance to um, CFBD site for the and on the first one that you put up, the building looked very close. On the uh, not not that one because uh, no, go back, forward then, forward, forward. No, no, he's. They look very, very... Where you'd got the um, glass frontage for the lift area in the middle, it's that picture. That one, right. Now, that's the side with the CIPD building in front, correct? How close is that? So if you see here, that's the, the glazing you see in that picture, it's on elevation, is, is set back here. Right. So they have, they have left a um, sort of courtyard area, you could say, here. So um, you come in, so in theory, you come in the courtyard to get, to get into the lift, which means the dis disability access, again, disabled people wouldn't be able to get down there. Right. Um, go to the, the bin storage sure. and can you tell me whether the refuse have said anything about this because I can't find it in here. I collecting it. They probably have found it. I've just missed it. I mean the, the refuse collection service at the council. Uh, no, they haven't been consulted on this application. But looking at the the size and spacing to the side of the building. You're confident we'll get to the uh, storage. Can you put your mic on, Marcellus? You're confident we'll get to the storage place with their vehicles to collect. Yeah. So the servicing is done on the street at the moment, and it will be for the residential. So somebody has to move it from there to the street. Right. Um, there was a couple more questions. Could you go through the um, the DRP um, amber? Because one of the objectors, one of the speakers, said about it had been to DRP three times. Hasn't it got green after three? Surely. So the, the three DRP meetings was on the pre-application proposal. Yeah. Um, so it it hasn't been back since then so they submitted the application to us the planning application we have then um as you see it's gone on for some time um we have then been in negotiations with them about design and various aspects clearly the viability has um has taken its time as well um but what they have done is satisfy the in consultation with the urban design officer in terms of amending the scheme to get it to an acceptable design um which is what they watch that what they've done so although it hasn't got a, a drp verdict of green um, has some extensive um, consultation negotiations with our design officers and ourselves um, to get the acceptable design. Uh, the last, last question for a moment about uh, affordable housing. Why is there none in this site, given there's 20 properties now and there were 16 last time we considered this site? And there doesn't seem to be any contribution for affordable housing elsewhere? Um, so the, 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 the affordable, it has been subject to viability, so this has been extensively looked at by our viability assessor. What we've done in the agenda is um, a few queries were raised from the floor at the April committee. Um, so we've set that out on pages 43 to 44 of the agenda. Um, so essentially it is a combination to build costs um, which the, the construction costs for the application has actually also been reviewed by a further external consultant. Um, we have gone through the, the, the details of the, of the, of the application. Um, so it is unfortunate, but that is, that is the advice, unfortunately, back from our viability officers. Right. If our 
proposed, our policies say anything over 15 has 40 percent, and this is 20 we're talking about, which is at least two, and there should be two on there, if, if not more. And the reason given by yourself and by the objector isn't valid as far as I'm concerned. There should be some affordable housing, either provision and site or a substantial amount of money passed to the council to provide it elsewhere. Um, we have put in the, um, the clawback mechanisms as advised by the, um, the Mayor of London um, in situations such as this. So um, they'll be built into the Section 106 agreement. Are there any other questions? Councillor McGarth. Um, can we just go back to this business about the police and particularly the bit about the entrance, where the entrance is? I didn't quite follow the answer. Are we, are we able to make it a condition that the entrance be moved in line with the police recommendation? Um, no, I'd suggest not. We can't, can't condition that because that's what the plans are showing where the entrance is. Um, what I might say, though, is that the 16-unit scheme did have the entrance in the same place. Um, okay, so let me put it another way. Is not following the police's advice a valid reason for us to reject the application? Um, my advice is, given the, the, the previous scheme that we've approved, um, would, be, would be not to not reject it on those grounds. Um, we have applied the conditions they've suggested. And so um, I think it's best to give the applicant a chance to meet those, meet those conditions um, with this scheme. Um, and if significant issues arise with that, then potentially changes could be accommodated there. But um, That's the bit that I don't quite understand. When you say give him a chance, I mean, are the applicants willing to move the entrance or not? Uh, I don't know. I haven't asked him the question. Okay. Okay, thank you. We are looking at this application as it stands. Questions? Okay, then, Councillor Southgate. A quick one. Is there anything in the emerging London plan that helps us on the affordable housing front? I mean, I, I feel that, okay, it's, it's a comment, but we may have reached the end of the road with the, the planning gain model that we've been trying to use all these years when we're told that there is absolutely no scope with a development like this, um, but is there anything in the London plan that's going to reconfigure the way we approach applications like this? Um, at this stage, so that the, um, in all essence, the 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 the, the SPG that the mayor released. Um, essentially feeding into the system to gain those clawback mechanisms for um, where schemes are subject to viability. Um, so we have those in place. Um, in terms of the emerging London plan, um, it is obviously still in, in, in draft format, but I don't know of any significant changes between that particularly and the, and the current London plan in terms of affordable housing provision. Um, clearly the stance is the policy for the for the local plan as, as a starting point. Um, they did bring in, the, the mayor did bring in the 35% fast track, they called it, route, where you wouldn't have to submit viability reports if you, if you could provide that on site. Um, so at the moment, that's, that's a, the situation. Any more questions? Okay, comments, please. I would have thought that this area was designated for commercial use and not for residential purposes. And now we have a six-story residential unit in the middle of the Broadway with glass balconies overlooking the main road, overlooking the main road. I mean, I would have thought that this was not suitable for that area. It doesn't matter how obscure the glass is. We know what people put in balconies, dump rubbish, all sorts of things. 
get the clothes dried in the balconies facing the main road. But this is a consideration of yours before you, you know, advise us to approve the application. Um, so, the, I mean, the, the Broadway has a, it's a variety on that road in terms of residential and commercial. Um, obviously, the planning history is key here. I mean, there's been permissions for residential up in this location. Um, there's a residential road to the, to the west. Um, there are particular, um, you could say, office business hub districts, which is more nearer, the, uh, nearer Warple Road and, and, and over in that area of the, of the town centre, um, where we are looking to protect, protect the office space and protect the business districts. Um, with this particular site, um, given the restaurant at the ground floor level with, with, with you could call vacant airspace above, um, we wouldn't have any good, strong grounds for resisting residential here. Um, on page 16, it talks about, on 4.2, it talks about the appeal that was lodged against refusal. Um, and it says that uh, the applicant was in, w unwilling to enter into a legal agreement. The lack of a signed and completed agreement meant the appeal proposal failed to secure appropriate financial or other contribution. Perhaps they should have been under questions. Are we happy that that's happened? No right. All right. Well, yes. all right. I'm, I'm assuming that as it's written down there, it hasn't happened and nobody has said it has. So therefore, the applicants are uh, not doing that. Can I suggest then that um, if we are going to agree this, we put some more conditions on about landscape design and this legal thing that I've just talked about, um, but I'm not voting for it anyway. So, but in the event of it going through, can we have those conditions on? Councillor Henry. Thank you, Chair. My concern is where the entrance is. If it was at the end of Terrace, I could understand, but it's not. So I think, you know, in my own view, uh, it, you know, the entrance should be something we consider of, you know, placing somewhere else. Are there any other comments? Councillor Ward. Thank you. Um, I think 20 new homes um, is would be excellent for the area. The area is obviously a mix of residential and the commercial being a mix of um, commercial um, retail and commercial office space. Um, the whole area is a, is a complete mix. And um, from the environmental point of view, and the um, solar panels and uh, insulation is great, but one of the um, most important things is that people um, can live hopefully close to where they work or very, very close to public transport, which is why there's no, no car provision, parking provision allowed on the site, because um, the people who live there will either work very closely or walk to um, the, the public transport options nearby. Um, so I, I, in that, I don't see it as being um, uh, overly... I don't think, I think it's entirely in keeping with the rest of the area. It's a perfectly good development. I'm disappointed about um, the no um, affordable housing or affordable housing provision within the site. Um, but you have to face the, the financial realities. If we um, stipulated 20% um, or 40%, um, we, could pass the, we could pass the planning permission. But if the developer is going to make a loss, then they just won't build it. Um, uh, and it's included in, in the report that, as, as the developer was saying, there are the construction costs and then there are the, um, the recoup in terms of the sale costs of selling the flats once they're built. If the construction costs come down for some reason and if the sale price of the flats go up for some, re some reason and that means that they do make more money on it, then we claw them back to put in towards social housing. And that's to be reviewed at the start stage and the end stage of the development. And that's, uh, that, that's entirely right and within the, the rules that we do. Um, generally, again, 20 more residences in the centre of Wimbledon, closer to um, public transport, I cannot see a good planning reason to say no to this. 
it's, it's a good steam. It may not be a perfect steam, as always with these things. It may not be perfect, but it's a good steam. We should pass it. Are there any other comments? Councilman? Um, well, only that I don't see the point of asking the police for their their comments if we're then going to ignore them. Um, so I, I'm not at all happy about the comment about where the entrance is, and I think we should take that into account. Thank you. Just, just linking into that, I'm looking at the, um, uh, the DRP's opinion. Um, they, they mentioned landscaping, public realm has the potential to become softer. Now, the applicant has indicated that he's willing to, to address that in, in conjunction with, um, with Jane Plant, which is good. Secondly, the residential entrance needs further development to ensure it was a welcoming entrance. If we're concerned about where the entrance is, but we're being advised that we cannot um, pursue the, 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 the recommendation of the Met on this, another angle is to say that it, it is inappropriate in design terms to have it on the side rather than the front. Um, I, I don't know whether that is a sustainable reason for for objection, but it, it does seem to me that there are worries about this amongst several members, um, and, and we shouldn't just let it go. Any other comments? Councillor Lanning. Thank you, Chair. I, I just want to echo Councillor McGrath and Councillor Southgate's points around the entrance. I think that the issues around antisocial behaviour and crime have been brought up by a number of different people within the report by the design officer and by um, the DRP. And I think that while the applicant has clearly done a lot of work to try and amend the design, I think still it sort of just meets minimum requirements and doesn't go anywhere beyond that. So I'm quite uncomfortable with it as it stands as well. We're just discussing the previous application that had been approved. Um, we'll be with you in a minute. We have a valid planning concern about the entrance. We could do one of two things. One is we could refuse, or the second is we could defer and ask for the entrance issue to be resolved. Yeah, we, we could defer instead of but there's already an projecting. application that is 
go onto the committee and application for this thing, which is in the same place. So they've already got they've already got a, an application they could use. Yeah, it's the 60, 16 unit scheme had entrances in the same place. The, the original, the first scheme had the entrance in exactly the same place, and that was approved. Okay, so I'm 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 trying to get a feel for whether we defer for for the entrance, or we or we refuse. So let's just get a feel. Let's get a recommendation. Sorry, I'm just a minute. Yeah. Um, Chair, um, um, Tim's advised me um, of the planning history on um, this, and uh, clearly, um, if um, a, a, a quite um, tough approach was taken on the issue of um, uh, access to the building and matters of safety and security, um, then um, it could leave the um, council very much exposed were the applicant um, minded to lodge an appeal. Having said that, um, if the council um, took um, a, a decision and was to um, indicate that it felt able to take a different position in this instance because of new information which it had before them, um, namely the um, feedback from the Metropolitan Police, then and whilst I don't have um, any legal advice on, on this matter at this very moment, um, this is uh, an approach that could be taken which would lessen the risk of um, a, an appellant perhaps um, seeking to table an application for costs in, in the case of an appeal. Uh, you know, I'm sorry if it sounds terribly cautious, um, but the, the, there is always that, that, that risk of an appeal if a decision is taken which... Um, the applicant considers is um, unreasonable or unjustified, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that, you know, given that the last scheme didn't appear to have the feedback from the Metropolitan Police, if members genuinely believe that this was new information which led them to a different view, then that could be noted in the minutes and could then feed into um, a, a, any, any submission in the event of an appeal. Um, it's a comment, but I think it's partly a, a question to planning officer as well. There is an existing planning permission in place for a 16 unit um, block on the site. Um, were we to defer, uh, were we to refuse tonight or defer and then refuse at a later date, the developer could just go and build a 16 unit block that they already have permission for. Therefore, the upshot of us deferring would not move the entrance to the front would not make any other changes. It would mean it'd be likely they would build the 16 unit block that they've already agreed and have planning permission for, and therefore the upshot of us yes. refusing would be losing four properties on the site. Um, can you just cl clarify that for me? Yeah, so the, the, the previous scheme that went to planning committee last year has been a, was approved. Um, it is still pending, it hasn't, decision notice hasn't actually been issued yet because the Section 106 agreement has not been signed yet. So, but there's a resolution to grant um, by the Planning Committee for that, for that scheme. Um, so yes. Councillor Lanning. Just, I was just going to add to the point that it is with affordable housing they provided that Section 106 is signed. They would then have to provide affordable housing on that site. Councillor Southgate. 
Yes, I, th I think the point is, as Mr Lewis uh, has set out, the information, the advice from, from the, uh, the Met Police w was not available when no. we considered the previous application. I think we are, it's very detailed, I think we are duty bound to take it into account and ask the applicant how he you know, proposes to address it in detail because the signs are at present that the, the design is not fully compliant and although a certificate might be issued, there are a number of points where there is severe doubt that it is fully compliant with the designing out crime advice. So in essence, this is an argument for a deferral to, for that point to be considered. Um, I think I would want to argue against Councillor Southgate's proposal. I think another deferral is not helpful in this case. I think we've got to say yes or no. I appreciate the mood of the meeting seems to not to be um, in favour of um, accepting um, and giving permission to this tonight. So I would propose that we just refuse permission. Um, straight off. I don't think we can shilly-shally around and wait another month or two. I think we've got to say yes or no tonight. And if, if councillors aren't minded to say yes tonight, then I think we should just say no. Another deferral to go back and to move that entrance to the front would mean a complete redesign of the whole block. That's going to take months and months and months. Um, I, I think we should just say yes or no tonight. Do you want to propose something, <laughs> Councillor Southgate? Yes, I, I'm. Uh, I don't think it's uh, you know a, a black and white yes or no, accept or refuse. I, I we don't I think have outright strong grounds to refuse. We have a particular point of objection to the design, which I think can be met by a deferral, and that will be in the. For the vote, those in favour of a deferral, please show. Those against, then the, the application will be deferred. Um, we are now moving to agenda item 11, which is Willington School. Thank you, Chair. Um, members, the application site uh, is currently comprised of part three, part two stories building as Willington School. It's on a fairly small site for a, for a school. Um, the surrounding area is mainly residential dwellings. This is the existing um, elevation, so the existing street scene at the top and at the rear below. The proposal itself um, is for the erection of um, outbuilding um, to provide for a temporary uh, kitchen facility to provide hot meals for the school pupils on site. The proposal also includes the extending of the, of the brick wall along the frontage at the same height um, uh, putting up a timber fence behind to screen the modular, modular building, which is for the temporary kitchen. Uh, just turn to the floor plans. So it would, um, it fronts the, um, the main road, um, so it extends out. The link would be via a ramp into the, into the modular building um, with extractor units going out, out to the front. Uh, into the school site. Turning to the school grounds itself, so you see it's currently used as a um, uh, an out, small outdoor pitch for the school, but the proposal itself would come in here into this section of the site. 
Um, this is looking on the site itself, looking at the back, residential properties at the back. Their garden's just beyond that fence line. Um, closest neighbouring property to the to the application is this one here. Um, sta officer standing here, roughly where the um, the unit is proposed to go. Looking at the street scene, um, so this wall is proposed to be built in place of the fence at the same height. That wall would remain permanently. Um, the proposal itself is for a temporary three-year period, um, whilst internal alterations are taking place to the school building so that they can keep providing um, school hot meals on the site itself. Um, there will be a fence behind this building which would shield the, the modular building, which is the temporary kitchen which would go behind here. You know, there's some wooden panelling here, um, so we think that would be, be in keeping to assist with the street scene. You'll note the bins are, uh, are currently on the road. Um, the proposal also includes provision for some bin storage within the unit itself as well, which is proposed over here. So in terms of the kitchen facility, it is this space here with link through to the school building here. Um, that's the closest residential property here. So it's over here on the angle um, from there. Um, overall members, um, proposals considered to be acceptable. Um, it's for a temporary three year period only and would assist the school in continuing to provide meals on site for the pupils. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Thomas, please. Hello, thank you, Madam Chair. I've just got a few other points I'd like to add, or questions I'd like to answer more than anything else. And one of the main ones is, is why can't we have the wall as high as possible so we can stop all the noise and sound coming through it? This is not going to take anybody's light out from close by, because basically behind it is just a street. Also, the food extraction, which seems to be down at ground level, why isn't this raised up to the top of the building, whereby it's going to be diffused through the whole environment. It won't just be concentrated. I also, like Polly, live in one of those little houses. And what the school caused to us all through traffic, through appalling parents, is a nightmare. And this is going to create more of a nightmare with all this food coming back and forth. I'd also like to ask, why can't the school buy in the food if we're going to have to suffer the traffic anyway. Why can't the girls' school down the end of the road, 300 yards away, they have massive kitchens. Why can't they make the food for them and bring it in? And my worry is, at the end of this three-year period, because building work is starting in the yard at the moment, that we're going to left, be left permanently with this kitchen. What measures are going to take place to stop this from happening? And I'd be uh, grateful if these questions could be answered, because I'm also in fear of also losing some of our parking bays, because we've already lost two of our parking bays to the school's mini minibuses. Now, does this mean slowly they can, the school going to want some more of the parking bays so that they can get the place for their little van to come and pick up the rubbish? This is also a worry to me. Thank you. Um, Keith Brown, I've got uh, Peter Luard sharing the six minutes. Where, where are you? Good evening, okay. committee members. I'm Keith Brown, headmaster of Willington, and this is my colleague Peter Luard, who's the bursar. Uh, I've been in post now for one year. Since taking up the position, I've been working to move with the times and to modernise the school. To that end, we recently announced we are going to be changing the manner in which we deliver the education of the pupils from the current 13 plus model to a more usual 11 plus model. And in addition, we will become a co-ed school from September 2020. Having been a boys only school for 134 years, these are substantial changes. I've been teaching now for 25 years and I've worked in many different types of schools. The education sector is constantly developing and children's health and well-being has become ever more important in recent years. I'm acutely aware of the role that a healthy diet can play in children's lifelong health and well-being. And this is the first school that I've worked in which has been unable to offer hot school lunch to its children. I'm sure you're aware that it is the Department for Education and indeed Mountain Council's policy to provide hot meals to all children in its maintained schools. It was one of my aims when I started to find a way to provide a hot lunch solution, whilst at the same time I'm very keen to minimise the impact this will have for our neighbours. 
While some of the points they have raised are valid, I am somewhat perplexed that some would seem to wish to deny children a healthy hot lunch. I feel it is very important to do our utmost to provide all children with healthy, healthy food at every opportunity and to educate them in the habits of healthy eating and exercise. I should point out that we currently provide nine periods of the timetable to sport and exercise out of the 50, which I think you will be agreeable, agreeable to, which is actually quite considerable. I was particularly surprised by one comment contained within one of the objections, which on one hand applauds us for showing an interest in providing hot lunches, but on the other hand says the community think it is not desirable. Careful consideration has been given to these plans by our architects so that we can provide the best possible solution on a temporary basis. And when finances permit, we seek to have a more permanent solution that will, will in no way impinge on our neighbours' well-being. Indeed, it will only seek to further enhance the healthy lifestyles of future generations. Having read the application documents, including objections to the plans and consideration, considerations that the planning officer Stuart Adams has given to this proposal, I concur with his findings. We are more than happy to meet the conditions that Mr Adams has highlighted. I am sure you are aware of the time constraints that we are working to with the new term just over six weeks away. I hope you agree with me that this is a desirable planning application that will benefit many young people and a positive decision tonight would allow us enough time to deliver, the, deliver this for September. Mr Leward uh, is able to answer some of the queries, I believe, that have been put forward tonight, so thank you very much. Uh, Chair, good evening. Um, yes, the, our, our architect has, has sought to uh, uh, answer um, the, the questions which have been raised uh, previously. We do uh, try our very best to, uh, to take into account the, the views of our neighbours. Um, there are a couple of uh, extra, uh, a number of extra points that have been raised this evening. We have got the contractors on site at the moment. We do most um, summer holidays. Uh, we've, we've had a, a four-phase um, development plan, which has been going for the last uh, six years. We've spent over two million pounds on developing the school. Uh, and the, the fourth phase is designed to uh, open up the, the basement, uh, which will release the space uh, necessary for the permanent kitchen. Um, so this is very much a, a temporary uh, measure to, to, to get hot food to the, to the children who have done without it for the last 134 years. Um, the, um, the, the other uh, points raised, um, we've, we've lowered, because of the comments of, of neighbours, we've, we've lowered the height of the wall. It's uh, interesting now to hear for the, wall, the request for the wall to be raised. Um, we, we do continually seek to uh, uh, get a, consult our parents and, and uh, on, on the parking side. There, there is a parking uh, issue uh, in, in all uh, Merton Council schools uh, and we've been cooperating with the council uh, on, on trying to uh, produce solutions to that. Um, and we will continue to do our best to, uh, to, to deal with the concerns of our neighbours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Pick up on a few points. Um, in terms of the boundary wall, um, this was was lowered for aesthetic street seeing reasons. Um, so that was the reason behind it to so match the existing. We feel because as that wall is going to be permanent, uh, we felt that um, the original one was too high. Um, they have, however, put the, the timber screening up behind, which would be removed after three years, along with the along with the cabin unit. In terms of extractors, the important thing with that is that the environmental health legislation will rem just remain in place, and so. Um, that if, if that becomes uh, a neighbouring immunity issue, then um, members of the public can, can make a complaint to our environmental health team for investigation. But in terms of the position of the, of the unit, um, the kitchen section does stop here. Um, here. Um, and in terms of bin storage, it will actually provide a cover for the, for the bin storage um, within the site itself, um, which is more aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. Um, in terms of financial accounts and, and, and where the funding would come from, that's, that's not a material plan consideration for this application. Um, but the kitchen is to be temporary. Um, we've conditioned that for a three-year period. Thank you. Councillor Holden. 
Thank you, Chair. I'm here tonight to um, oppose this application and speak on behalf of my residents in Hillside who will be uh, severely affected by these works and ongoing developments at this site. Um, you mentioned already that the building works are not relevant at the moment, so that they're separate. But I've been shown a picture which seems to suggest, uh, suggest that uh, works have already begun on these plans uh, for, for this before a decision has been made. Um, at what point is development um, going to keep going? What, what, when there's enough enough? And that's something that the committee might want to consider. In terms of um, amenity for children, one thing in particular that we're keen on is more play space and amenity space for children to run around in. And these proposals will reduce the playground by up to 15% and uh, is already quite a small plot as mentioned by the planning officer. So these kids will have less space to exercise and that will affect their well-being. Also, the extractor fans, uh, as mentioned by several objectors, um, they will be detrimental to the neighbours adjoining and they will be point over the playing ground and onto the neighbours' gardens. This will affect the neighbours' right to enjoy their uh, sort of garden space in, in peaceful quietness and without, uh, the, well, basically these extractors cause lots of noise, um, will affect the neighbours and also the exhaust and the smells from the foods will also affect the neighbours. Uh, we've had this problem elsewhere in Wimbledon, um, where residents' houses adjoin businesses. It's a known problem and we shouldn't really cause it here. In terms of other reasons, you can think of noise as a key one. Um, traffic uh, servicing of this site, this junction there, uh, this site is already a key hotspot for traffic problems and concerns. Uh, residents have rightly noticed that parking is an issue. Um, where will these commercial vehicles go and turn around? It's not that easy to access around there. Therefore, I recommend the committee consider some of the following as possible clauses to refuse. You could look at uh, DMD3, which is design of alteration of buildings. Not, I don't think it meets that criteria sufficiently. Maybe DMEP2, which is about noise and affecting neighbours. Uh, DMT3 is about servicing and lack of ability to service places sufficiently well and causing harm to neighbours or possibly even 3.6 of the London Plan, which talks about uh, better and improved play space for children, rather than whereas this one talks about losing space. So there's a few things uh, there to consider, and I hope you can uh, refuse this tonight. Questions, please. Clarkson, Jim. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I have uh, three questions. Uh, first of all, how much of the children recreation space uh, is being lost uh, as a percentage, uh, bearing in mind what Councillor Holden said about the London plan. Um, secondly, what will happen to this temporary structure after three years? Is there a commitment by the school that it will go back to uh, the recreation space? Uh, and thirdly, uh, are there any adequate measures to protect uh, the residents from the fumes and the noise, uh, in addition to the enforcement uh, officers that you've mentioned? Thank you. Um, there's a percentage of the play space to be lost. Um, I don't have the figure, um, unfortunately. Um, it, is a, it is a negative aspect of the application, um, but it is for a temporary three-year period. So that is why we, we haven't actually explored that um, in great detail. Um, from reading through the, the documents in the submission, um, I understand the school do have access to playing fields elsewhere as well. Um, but that is a that is a negative. They have they are putting up the the fence on this side specifically so that um, a ball can still be kicked against it uh, on this side. Um, but yes, that is a it's a slight negative aspect of the proposal. But as it is for a temporary period, um, we're happy with that. Uh, the temporary structure itself, um, yes. So the, the the site would be restored back to um, what it is currently. Um, so the modular building. Um, it wouldn't have foundations. It would sit on the on the on the surface of the um, of the playing pitch at the moment. Um, the fencing would also be removed, and the brick wall would re would remain. Um, in terms of fumes and noise, well, we can sort our environmental health colleagues on this, and and obviously they come back with the with their conditions. Um, I think really the position of the building itself, they've kept it as close to the school as possible. As I said, the nearest residential occupier is to the to the right of this plan, over here, and the front of the front of their house is there. Um, so, in terms of mitigation, um, we really have the have the conditions there with the noise the noise levels condition. Um, 
that is the, the appropriate way to, to mitigate it in terms of planning. But as I said, the environmental health legislation still remains in place for any complaints to be um, assessed that way. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, Councillor Tenney. Is it that they're going to use the kitchen on Saturdays and outside of normal school hours? If so, you know, why have they got, but you're not renting out the gr school grounds or anything? Is that, is that the case? Um, so the because use is... You see, the residents wouldn't get a break from the smell only on Sundays. If they're going to use Saturdays and outside normal hours. Uh, the, the use of the kitchen is to be uh, Monday to Fridays only um, during school ter term time. So that is that is um, condition number five in the agenda. Um, and that's been on the basis of the application submitted. Can we just, can I just check two things? One of which is um, the, the existing work that's going on at the moment. I wasn't quite clear clear whether there is existing work and this is something they've already got planning permission for or or this is um, assuming they're going to get this planning permission. I understand I mean, officers may not be able to answer. Um, the other thing is, can we just have some clarity, uh, perhaps I, I just haven't understood it, about the the smells from the kitchen. So they go, they are, somebody I think said that they weren't going to have any, uh, any uh, ducting to take this away. What's going to happen to the smells from the kitchen? Thank you. In terms of existing work on site at the moment, um, I don't know. Um, I did get sent a video of it um, late this afternoon, uh, which I've seen. Um, but it was on the it was on the school um, mugger pitch. But um, I can't confirm if that's uh, subject to a planning application or not. Um, in terms of the the, the extract fans, yes. So, well, for a start, we the the use um, is restricted between the hours of eight and three, Monday to Friday. Um, but the a really great point really about the, the building its position um, the extractor fan is to, is to go through the building this way is not proposed to go over the roof um, but as I said the, the, the environmental health advice is, is the conditions to be applied and um, that legislation will remain environmental health legislation will remain in place once in operation um, who else had their hand up nobody right comments please Councillor Dean uh, this um, application doesn't make sense. If um, they're looking for uh, temporary uh, consent, uh, I assume, because um, the intimation was they don't have enough money uh, to get uh, permanent consent, uh, money isn't the issue because what we're saying today is um, can we plan for some square footage? Uh, if they're saying in three years' time they may have the money, they're only going to demolish what they've done and then, it seems to me, put up a more permanent structure in exactly the same place. Well, well, I, um, I do find this man very insulting. Um, may I actually finish the sentence then? Well, I was sticking to my point. If you actually let me finish the sentence... Oh, I'm allowed to say it, right. Uh, so... If somebody is talking about putting an application um, with regard to a basement, then really that needs to be discussed today because that is the application. This isn't about having one temporary facade. This is about a longer term application. And if we're talking about taking away sporting um, space, um, then I think that we shouldn't pass this. We should ask the, the score uh, to put its kitchen within its current uh, physical bounds. Because this isn't about this application. This is about the next application. And once they get this one through, it's very likely they'll get the next one through because they have the planning consent already. That was the start, beginning and end of my uh, logic for this. And this is why we should be rejecting it. Any other? We're on questions, aren't we? Not comments. That's, you said comments. Comments, yeah. Councillor Henry. For me, I think um, a kitchen, hot food is very important for young people. And um, especially in time like now when we are going through issues of obesity, unhealthy, um, our young people 
having to go to takeaway shops at lunchtime. You know, I think it's important, and um, I think um, I would recommend for a, you know whether it's temporary or for long time or full time or permanent. You know, it, having hot food in school is something that I would really you know recommend. Any other comments, please? Yeah, just finish that. I totally agree with that, but it's not for the school, in my opinion, to take outside space um, for the requirement for the kitchen. Major point. Councillor Najib. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think this is a question rather than a comment. In the previous application planning histories, was there a, a, an instance where they were allowed to have a kitchen facility which was then lapsed? Uh, I believe there was. I haven't got into the planning history myself, um, but the, the nature of the application through this documentation submitted is that they are they're doing works in the basement to create the kitchen, um, and they need this essentially for, for the temporary period to um, to try and keep the uh, uh, meals on site. In that case, my comment would be that uh, if we are going to agree this, uh, uh, that there should be a commitment or a condition that the next application there should be no ground floor level building at that level um i'll say we can't impose that as a condition because it would be it would be unreasonable to say no no ground floor level building uh in the future um but we have we do have the conditions on here so that they don't have to remove the building after three years is in this application does it at any stage, and I, I know the answer to this, but I need everyone to understand it. In this application, does it mention that they will be uh, developing a basement? So, may I just say, I had replica application, and that was not in the application, as this councillor over here said it was. I knew it wasn't, but what I did know is that the applicant presented that they were looking to do so. It's very important that this, rather than being interrupted, with uh, information that's wrong. It's so important that we get this right. Um, unless there are any further comments, I'd like us to move to the vote. Have we have got more comments to make. Councillor McGrath. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm minded to vote for this. If you, I'm, I'm particularly, you know, if you live near a school with 200 small boys, you have to expect a certain amount of noise and fuss and parents delivering children. But um, I am a bit concerned about starting the work prematurely. So I would like to know from officers um, if that is something that they would um, look into, because even if we give permission, I don't think people should be starting work before um, we've, we've done so. Um, yeah, I've, well, I'll send that video earlier today so we can pass that to our enforcement team to, to look at. Thank you. Councillor Dehaney. I am I'm, I'm always loath to reject applications from schools because I know what I wrote it is for the benefit of the kids. I mean, a kitchen just going to provide good health meals every day is a good thing. And therefore, I'm going to support this application. I'd like to move to the vote. Okay. Can I see those in favour of this application, please show? Those against? Two. Okay. Um, we now move on to agenda item seven, which is 59 Colwood Gardens.
Chair, uh, this application has been brought before the committee um, due to the level of public interest and the range and scope of objections uh, that cannot, in the event of permission being granted, uh, be addressed by conditions. Uh, the proposals um, are to um, demolish and rebuild uh, the site which is um, in the area where the hand is circling. Um, it's uh, a significantly extended end of terrace dwelling uh, with one parking space um, to the front. Uh, the uh, parking space would be, ret would be retained. Uh, six objections have been received um, in relation to the proposal, which is to rebuild um, uh, uh, a building on the site uh, to provide four flats. Uh, the objections are summarised in section five of the officer's report and relate to matters of design, bulk, massing, visual impact, loss of sunlight and pressure on parking. The proposals would deliver uh, additional dwellings and provide uh, two family-sized units. Uh, the officer's report uh, considers um, matters of uh, bulk um, and massing. And if I can take you to the elevations for uh, the proposals. The um, proposals, um, although different from what's there at the moment, would, in the officer's judgment, respect uh, the street scene. Uh, in terms um, of uh, impact uh, on uh, neighbour uh, amenity, if I can take you to the site location plan and you'll see there's, this is the space we have between the, uh, uh, the nearby um, uh, properties and uh, the site. Uh, the orientation, you'll see there where the hand is circling that's our north point. So in terms of the sun path, um, for um, a greater part of the day, the sun will um, shine into the garden from uh, the south and also um, into, the, uh, uh, into the late um, afternoon, um, as is very much uh, the case um, at the moment. Um, some of the neighbours' concerns have re uh, related to um, uh, uh, disturbance um, arising from uh, uh, the construction activity, uh, but you'll see from the officer's recommendation uh, that this can reasonably be dealt with by um, condition. Uh, in terms of the standard of accommodation, the proposals um, would um, meet um, the national um, space standards and uh, the garden spaces which would be provided um, as well um, would, would meet um, the Council's and um, uh, London Plan uh, standards. And permission is recommended um, subject to the completion um, of uh, a Section 106 agreement to make the scheme permit free. Officers have taken uh, the time to uh, seek the input, input not only of the uh, transport planning officers but also the parking uh, control uh, team. Uh, they've indicated that there is um, significant pressure in the area um, on parking permits, so it's entirely appropriate to make this scheme uh, permit free. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Eastgate. Hi. Um, I'm the owner of number 64 Clarington Road, so um, my garden backs onto the proposed site. Um, so, first of all, um, the plan's not actually accurate. So, up there, we've there the old plans, and so actually 64, 66, and 62 have actually been considerably extended. So, um, the, the plans actually look less intrusive than they're going to be. Um, it triples the footprint of the, um, the existing building, and therefore setting precedent for our area for overly developing um, the gardens because a lot of those houses do have large gardens so what would be then to stop everyone else doing exactly the same um, all spare land currently around Collierswood has already been consumed into flats so there's a huge tower the old tower on by um, the tube station is 300 flats um, the old Thames water site has been converted into 74 new homes so actually there's a lot of redevelopment already happening in, and we don't really feel that this one is necessary 
the building will steal the light. So as described earlier, where the sun comes round, it will actually be behind the building from about three o'clock in the afternoon, which is obviously when most people will come home from work. And um, obviously the restriction of light into those gardens will um, restrict the growth of grass, flowers and trees, which are predominantly all family houses, those houses. Um, complete demolition, demoli um, demolition of the building will obviously cause severe disruption on an extremely residential, that's such a small residential area, um, and mainly people with young children or um, elderly people living in that, that area. On the plans, um, the area they've got allocated for the waste for the bins is not actually big enough. There's two big wheelie bins and one green box per flat. So it would, the car won't fit in there amongst the bins. Um, there's no parking. That, there's hardly any parking for the people already there because of the number of drop curbs. And the house, the flats actually look directly into the infant playground of the primary school behind. So therefore, I'd like to, the committee to consider reducing the footprint or rejecting it altogether. Thank you. Um, a. Gulam Hossen wanting to speak? Not here? I think. No, okay. Um, then, uh, what have I done? Spencer Adams, architect. Uh, good evening. Um, so, this scheme uh, has been uh, quite reduced from the original application. Uh, it was originally five flats uh, with a large flo larger floor area. It's been reduced to four, uh, and the, the, the actual floor area reduced as well. Um, it's been significantly reduced in terms of scale, um, and it should be noted that it is a double plot uh, with quite a large garden. So we've been easily uh, been able to provide um, more than adequate amenity space uh, for the new flats uh, as part of the scheme. Uh, we did, we have worked with the planners uh, to address the concerns raised uh, along the way, uh, and we felt that we've dealt with those uh, as we've moved through the scheme. Um, on the issue of daylight, so the kind of approved, the uh, sort of BRE accepted uh, standard is that um, that sort of basically 50% of the garden on the 21st of March uh, gets more than two hours sunlight. In this case, on that day, uh, all of the gardens adjacent get 100% uh, uh, of sunlight for 10 hours of the day. So it's not, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't fail uh, closely on that, on that score. Um, what's the other issue? Um, obviously the issue of noise and disruption. Uh, as, as the uh, planning case officer has said, said we can you know, deal with that as a construction management uh, issue. And of course, uh, construction occurs in London all the time. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. That's it. Um, Chair and members, just to pick up on um, some of the um, points which um, uh, the resident of um, 64 Clarendon Road uh, has made. Um, I've visited the site. Um, I've seen for myself the spacing between uh, the properties in um, Colwood um, Gardens and um, uh, those that uh, might be uh, affected. Um, for um, a scheme such as this, um, much will um, uh, really turn on the judgment um, of uh, the planning uh, officer in terms of the visual impact, the sense of uh, intrusiveness uh, of any proposed extensions. Um, and I'm entirely happy with the recommendation um, that is um, uh, before you uh, this evening. Um, the point regarding um, the parking and uh, the conflict with the ability to store um, bins um, on uh, the site. Uh, there is um, uh, additional um, space around, unfortunately I don't have a, um, an enlarged um, site plan um, that I can refer you to, 
but there is additional space um, within the frontage um, of the site. Um, so even if our um, uh, refuse um, team determined that um, some additional capacity uh, was needed, again, I don't think it would be reckless to um, issue a decision uh, this evening as there is ability to uh, make amendments uh, to that with, without completely compromising or changing the scheme. Questions? Councillor Sarkey. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm just curious, we, a new bit of phraseology here in the introduction. Um, the range and scope of objections that cannot, in the event of permission being granted, be addressed by conditions. Is that suggesting in some way the, the application is not compliant with our policies? Because from what you said, it does appear to be. Chair, the um, Council's um, uh, scheme of management, which provides for delegated authority uh, to um, planning officers to determine uh, applications, um, flags up that um, in the event that uh, the nature of a condition, uh, sorry, the nature of an objection is one that can be uh, addressed by condition, then there's no overriding reason why that application has to be brought before the Council's Planning Committee. So, for example, if we had a proposal for um, a hot food takeaway and there was one objection that related to um, hours of opening and there was a concern to the effect of this will be you know, open all night, it will be causing a disturbance um, to us, then it would be quite reasonable for officers to attach a condition um, saying that uh, the premises shall only open until, say, 11 o'clock uh, at night, thereby addressing uh, the condition, uh, sorry, the objection. If somebody makes uh, an objection and it's to do with um, the massing, uh, the bulk, the more fundamental aspects um, of uh, a proposal, then that goes to the heart of what we're there to consider. We can't overcome that by saying, here's permission, but we'd like you to build something different. Um, so under those circumstances, we have to consider the objections that have been received and then, in many cases, draft a report and bring it before planning committee for, for, for a decision. But it doesn't mean that the scheme's unacceptable. Any other questions? Councillor uh, Henry. Just great. On page 87 and um, one, two, number two, um, bear with me because I may just not understanding. Could you just explain that for me and has it been addressed? There's anything to be addressed. It says no surface water runoff should discharge onto the public highway. So can you just explain a little bit more about that for me? Chair, as part of the um, Council's um, planning consultation uh, process, um, officers will um, seek um, input from the likes of the Environment Agency um, and uh, Thames Water. Their feedback will then inform the conditions and what are called informatives that are attached to the recommendation. The conditions that are attached are those um, matters that um, are um, absolutes in terms of what the applicant must do um, before they um, can carry out the development or before the development can be occupied. Whereas informatives are very much um, advisory. Um, so in this instance, um, we've had feedback from um, Thames Water um, and they've provided um, us with um, an advice note on that, which we've attached um, to um, this particular recommendation. Any other questions? Councillor Merkin. Um, how can we ensure that uh, future occupants of these four flats do not over, um, turn the front garden to parking? <coughs> because it's going to be park uh, permit free, isn't it, presumably? Because there's a CPZ in this area. Chair, um, where you've got um, a, a scheme which is built out um, as flats, then it doesn't have the same permitted development rights um, as if it were um, a single dwelling. So that in itself, planning controls would provide 
um, a reasonable um, uh, break. If works were carried out and if um, the um, whole of the front of the property um, was um, used for parking purposes, then there could be a breach of the Highways Act in terms of vehicles crossing uh, the curb, or there could be a breach of planning control if development's been undertaken without securing permission. Okay, no more questions and any comments, please? No? Nope. Okay, can we move to the vote? Those in favour of the recommendation, please. Is it in the conditions? About the bikes? Yeah, the cycle storage facilities. Cycle storage facilities to be improved to a higher degree. I mean, yeah, we can, we can add that's that. fine. We'll add it in. In favour of the recommendation, then, please, show with that condition. Thank you. Those against? Not voting? then that recommendation is carried. Uh, we now move on to agenda item 9, which is 43 Lancaster Road. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, the application site comprises a detached dwelling house within the just north of Wimbledon, Wimbledon uh, village area of the borough. Um, the site currently only has pedestrian access only at the moment. Um, you can see large garden extending out the back. Uh, the surroundings are residential. Um, the site's in a conservation area the building is of local um, local merit. This existing existing site plan at the moment. Um, the proposal itself is for the direction of two story rear extension, single story rear and side extensions, accommodation at basement level, and commercial roof space involving direction of a rear dormer roof extension. The proposal also includes direction of a single garage to the front of the property and formation of new vehicle access onto the onto Lancaster Road. Um, to provide off-street parking. So this is the proposed site plan. Where you see the flat, uh, the sort of roof lights here, the green roof, um, that is a flat roof, single-storey extension. The two-storey extension is on this side of the building. The dormer window is here within the roof, roof space. Single garage proposed at the front, and the proposed vehicle access is to be here in the bottom left hand corner. This is existing property, uh, period property, detached, uh, proposed, so um, where the dark grey walls are obviously is proposed. Um, proposed basement is at the back, um, partly below the proposed single storey rear extension and then going out the back at that angle beyond it as well. Um, side extension and then front garage here. First floor, so the two-storey rear extension is on this side of the building. Uh, the roof would they would make use of the existing roof space with a rear dorm window here. Turning to proposed elevations at the front, um, the garage is handed um, side on, so the side will actually face the road. Um, and there's the, the other side here. The two-storey rear extension coming in here at the back. That's the dormer window and the two-store extension here, and the ground floor here. Uh, this is just a clearer plan, really, showing the proposal itself. Um, some trees are proposed to be to be removed as part of the scheme. Um, so this is the tree protection plan. There are some mature trees at the back here. So the red line is where the tree protection fencing would go. Um, our tree officer has looked at this scheme in detail. They're proposing to remove some trees here at the back and one at the front to facilitate the um, new driveway coming off the road. By way of an update, there is a tree 
our tree officer has uh, enforced a tree preservation order on several trees which are to be remaining as part of this scheme to ensure the long-term protection. Um, I do have the exact list in, my, in the file, but generally speaking, it's the trees at the front here and some of the mature trees here in the back of the garden. Site photographs. Um, parts of the site are largely fairly over, overgrown. Um, this is actually at the front of the building itself. Um, so the proposed garage structure would come on in here. Looking to the side, at the rear, so the, the two-storey extension would come out of, of this section of the building. Um, that is at the back looking, looking, uh, is that looking, that's looking east. And again, down the side of the building on its eastern side. Turning to outside the site. Um, so the tree to be removed as part of the proposal to make way for the access to this one here. Um, as outlined earlier, the, the site doesn't benefit from any off-street parking at the moment, which is fairly rare in this area for a family-sized house. Um, the road is a, is a straight road, um, and no concerns are raised with regards to visibility and access for a single unit. Um, turning members' attention now to the modification sheet. You'll see that we've had a, um, a formal response from our, our flood risk manager um, who's reviewed the submitted information with regards to the basement construction um, and raises no objections subject to con conditions. So, Chair, those conditions are to be added to the, to the agenda and recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. So, 43 Lancaster. Mike Bishop, please. Thank you. My wife and I have lived at 69 Church Road for the last 25 years. Uh, 69 Church Road is a locally listed coach house next door, immediately next door to 43 Lancaster. We're grateful to the owners that the proposed construction of a substantial house in the back garden has been withdrawn, and we are sympathetic to and support the approval of the revised redevelopment subject to, what we think, two further conditions. Privacy is grossly undervalued in modern society and is under attack from many quarters. Much is made by the proposers, and in, the council's and in the council's documentation for this meeting, about the high wall at the front protecting their privacy, as well as minimising the impact of the view of the property from the road. They clearly think privacy is important. However, the proposals do not respect the privacy of our property or that of 71 Church Road. The loss of trees adversely affects the privacy of both our properties. We ask you to require the proposer to increase the height of the walls bordering both our properties. And further height could be added by a trellis with suitable plants with foliage to protect our joint privacies. With specific regard to our property, the proposed location of the garage requires the removal of trees which afford us much privacy while we're in our own garden. It will mean that we should be overlooked not only by 43 Lancaster, but also the two new tall houses recently built in Lancaster Gardens. Given that there is no longer a need to provide access to a new house in the rear garden, the retention of the garage to the front of the property is not ideal. It entails awkward access from the drive, necessitating much shunting forth and back in a narrow space. It would make more sense to locate the garage on the left side of the property when viewed from the road with a direct line from the road to the garage. Relocation of the garage to the side also permits the retention or planting of trees in front of their house on the border with our property. This will preserve both our privacies. In summary, we ask that you respect the privacy of our historic listed property and its future owners and require the garage to be located to the other side of the house. And secondly, that you require the proposer to increase the height of the walls bordering both 69 and 71 Church Road in the interests of privacy. Thank you. Um, Donald Pepper. Yeah, 
sorry, got it, thank you. Right. Um, yeah, so in terms of the, uh, I live at um, 8 Lancaster Gardens, which is um, to the top um, top of the property. Um, the thing, uh, the conditions um, that I'd love the, um, the council to consider is that um, I'm very concerned that there was an original plan that did have a monstrosity of a building in the, what is now the back um, garden. You see how peaceful it looks. Um, given the shape of the, the hill in this area, it would have absolutely dwarfed uh, the house, my house, uh, underneath it. Um, in fact, when it was coming out, I don't know if you remember in, in Venice, there was this massive cruise liner that uh, hit, uh, hit the, hit the uh, deck, but it was a bit, it would be that sort of, like, that sort of hugeness. Um, so I wonder whether there could be a condition. They've put in this planning permission retaining the garden to say that it be approved but with the condition that uh, that no future um, large building is uh, planned or, or put into that uh, that space that's currently being preserved um, just uh, two other uh, points um, I, I do also um, echo and support um, the points made by um, the neighbors in 69 and 71 church road for, the, for their privacy fully appreciate and think the council should put that as a condition as well I would note that the extra square footage that, that the property will have, I'm guessing, is no less than two or 3,000 square feet. And I'm guessing, I don't know exactly, that village square footage is, say, 800 pounds a square foot. So it's going to add two or three million pounds onto the value of the property. So I do feel that um, it's uh, not uh, unreasonable to ask that a little extra money is spent to uh, afford the, their neighbours uh, the kind of privacy that uh, is common in the village. And just the last point, I, I don't know how you can liaise with the uh, traffic, but this area of Lancaster Road is very thin. Uh, there's only one car can go at a time because of there's cars on both sides for parking places. And just whether some con condition can be made in terms of when this building work goes ahead, that real thought can be given as to how um, traffic um, can be the, the, the uh, jams can be mitigated because it's the only entrance into the whole of Lancaster Gardens, Lancaster Road, Lancaster Avenue, and there must be 80 or 90 houses that only have that method of getting in. It's a one way. Um, so thank you. I very much hope that these conditions can be reasonably applied. Um, Gerard Manley, please. Hi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, my name is Jared Manley from First Plan, speaking on behalf of Charlie Headley for extensions to the residential property at 43 Lancaster Road. This property is in need of modernisation. The application follows years of engagement with the council through extensive levels of pre-application discussions comprising formal pre-app, follow-up meetings and correspondence with Officer Richard Allen, Tim Bryson and Rose Stepanek. The proposed extensions have been discreetly located are subordinate in scale and would be finished in high quality materials. These would complement the character of the property and the appearance of the conservation area and protect residential amenity. In relation to trees, to allow for the proposed extensions, some trees would be removed, including disease trees. The application has been supported by a tree survey, arbocultural impact assessment and arbocultural method statement. The submitted method statement concludes the overall quality, longevity and amenity contribution provided for by the trees and the groups of trees within and adjacent to the site will not be adversely affected as a result of the LPA consenting to the proposed development. A landscaping scheme and green roof is also included with the proposals. Rose, the council trees of, tree officer, has visited the site on more than one occasion. She has assessed the scheme and gives her full support raising no objection to the removal of a limited number of trees. The method statement includes an extensive list of measures which would be followed in order to protect the retained trees on site before, during and after the works. A planning condition relating to the site supervision in relation to trees has also been proposed by officers, which the applicant's happy to agree to. Furthermore, the council have issued a TPO on a number of the retained trees at the site to give an even greater level of comfort to members, the council and neighbours, that the health and stability and amenity value of these trees will be protected for the future. With regards to the boundary wall, the removal of the 2.75 metre wide section of boundary wall is to allow vehicle access 
and off-street parking, where there currently is none for this property. As a parking uplift, this will ease demand for parking in the area. The existing property was built by AJ Styles and is identified as a positive building in the conservation area. However, views of this property are largely obscured by this boundary wall. The removal of a small section of wall will enable street level views towards its frontage and allow the property to be better appreciated in the street scene. The majority of the boundary wall would be retained. The small loss will not harm the character of the conservation area as any perceived harm is outweighed by increasing visibility of this attractive property in addition to the evident parking benefits. Planning conditions relating to materials and boundary treatment have been proposed and will also ensure that the new pillars of the boundary wall and all the other materials relating to the extension will be finished in a manner to satisfy officers. Uh, in relation to the comments uh, received and heard just before, um, conditions, are also, conditions are included um, in relation to the obscured windows which will preserve residential amenity. Um, and this application is obviously only for the extensions to the existing house only. In conclusion, it is considered and it has been agreed by officers that proposed development will preserve and enhance the significance of the Wimbledon North conservation area in accordance with national London plan and local policies. We therefore respectfully ask that planning permission be approved in line with the officer recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Really just in regard to some um, proposed conditions um, from, from, the, from the floor there. Um, in terms of the increase in height of boundary walls, um, that we have what's on the plans where they're, um, we have to determine what's on, what's on the plan. So um, it's difficult for us to impose such a condition to increase height of boundary walls as part of the scheme before us. Um, however, should that be a particular sticking point with members that I believe that could be could be conditions to assist um, in that matter. In terms of relocation of the garage to the side, um, that wouldn't be able to be conditioned. Um, and that would be materially different to what's proposed um, this evening. In terms of retaining the garden as a garden, um, yes, there is a previous there was a previous application for a house in the back but that was withdrawn. Um, so the house reverts back to as as is um, a single plot. Um, it would be unreasonable to to add a condition for this application to say no development shall take place on that um, rear garden. Um, any application would have to be assessed on on its merits should that come forward at any time. So I'm, under this particular application, we wouldn't be able to impose such a condition. In terms of the construction of the access road. Um, it is for a single access road um, to serve a single property. Um, it obviously involved putting in a drop curb and taking out part of the wall. Um, but again, if that particular sticking point with members, we could add a condition on there regarding a, requiring a construction management plan just to assist with that aspect of the scheme. Thank you. Councilor Make. On some of the trees, you talked about the TPO trees some time ago. Are those the ones at the end where the development that the resident talked about that may happen hasn't happened yet, but aren't they at the end of the property anyway? Uh, and therefore, they'd have to t take away TPO trees in order to do that development. Yeah, so that, mm. yeah, that's what I thought. The tree preservation order trees. Yeah. Um, I've got a list in the file, but there they are. There's two or three at the back here, in the site and at the front. So, so it's a group. It's a group um, tree preservation order. There, where you. Um, I can. That lot. I can refer to a plan if you if you bear with me, chair. I can refer to a plan with the TPOs on them. Bear with me a second.
So the true post-motion order trees is this one, number two, number five, number four, number seven, and 16, 17, 18 at the, at the front. So, yeah. Uh, and a little question, if I may. On the plan they had before with the um, outline of what the house looks like at the moment, the, the one, that one, that, that one, what does it say in those small boxes on the side? I can't read them from here, and I couldn't read them on the plan that you've given me either. So could you tell me what the, um, there's one that starts with, ne next to where the um, car park, car area is supposed to go, there's one, yeah, move over to the, yeah, well, that one, that one says green, that one. What does that say? Uh, that one there says ornamental shrub planting. Yeah. That's down the side of the side of the building. And it says what? Sorry. Ornamental, ornamental shrub planting. Oh, right. Any other questions? Councillor De Haney. Um, page one hundred, paragraph three point two, the last sentence. The garage would be linked to the house by a glazed link. I'm not sure what a glazed link is. I haven't had, but I'm not sure. That's the first question. The other one is that the, um, the boundary wall seems to be of historical importance to you know, the local residents. <coughs> Has he got to really punch a hole in the wall to get to the garage or to wherever? Could he find another route? So the uh, the glazed link referred to by the officer is actually these um, it's glass in the in the roof. Um, so that's that's the glazed link. Um, so it's not all glass, but um, that's with on the roof on the roof there. So that's that yeah that's attached to the garage at the front. Um, in terms of the wall, um, yes, it is a it is a nice wall, um, but where, where they're proposing it is um, is in the corner of the of the property. Um, and the rest of the wall would, would remain. Um, yeah, so that's the current entrance to the to the site at the moment. That's the only um, that's the only front entrance at the moment. There's, there's no there's no vehicle entrance. Uh, I believe so. I believe that's remaining. This yeah, this, this area down here is just a turning head, yeah. and then the, the single entrance point is here for vehicles. Yeah. Um, but that archway remaining here. And so, so a car coming through here yeah. and swinging to the garage over here. Okay. So the garage doors are this side. Any further questions, Councillor Lanning? Thank you, Chair. It's just a question based on the objection um, from Church Road around privacy. Um, is there anything that can be done to sort of mitigate the, the removal of those trees to prevent any sort of loss of privacy or, or overlooking if that is a concern? Um, boundary treatments are, with trees are difficult because they do change throughout the year. Um, so, in, in planning terms, we don't rely upon them as, as providing screening in perpetuity long term between properties. Um, we do have a, a requiring by condition a further, further landscaping scheme to be submitted, which will include some additional planting. Um, but the, the proposal here, yes, it would remove some screening, um, replace with a single story, story structure. Um, so, clearly, we can't can't impose any further landscaping in there. Um, but that is part of the scheme that's been weighed in the balance of the, of the assessment. Any further questions? Comments? Councillor Southgate. Chair, I was minded to object to this largely on the um, breaching 
banging a hole in the the boundary wall. And, and I'm grateful for the photograph because it is uh, it's a fine wall, and it reminds me of you know the number of times I've walked past it and admired it. And and these things form a important element in the the public realm that we all enjoy. I think my attitude is entirely different when I hear the applicant telling me that the gates will be open to allow views of the, the house because my expectation was that this would be like so many other um, properties on Church Road where this has been done where you confront a high solid wall with um, doorway um, metal or or timber with, with absolutely no views in at all and if that were to be the case I would would want to oppose it but if it's you know wrought iron gate that will give views through that that's entirely different because then that makes a contribution to the public realm so can we so condition it that officers view the proposed um, gates and that they satisfy themselves that it will provide the, the views that have been suggested Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, condition five is a boundary treatment condition requiring the details to be submitted. We could add on to that details of the gates if you wish for the for the front entrance. Okay. So that can that can be added. Um, I very much agree with Councillor Southgate's points, but I'm also um, quite um, sympathetic to the uh, the resident who wanted the higher higher wall um, and I think the officer suggested there was a way that we could we could work that in so if it's possible to do that I would like us to do it please <laughs> any other comments yeah uh, uh, thank you chair it's just um, exactly what counts um, sorry officer Bryson said could we have one condition that the construction traffic management plan is formed part of the conditions and that's submitted before construction starts. Okay, can we move to the vote then? Those in favour, and we've got several conditions. We've got the modification conditions about water. We've got increased height of the wall with trellis or plants. We've got construction management plan and we've got gates um, added to condition five. Those in favour, please share. Thank you. That's unanimous. Then the application is successful. We now move to agenda item six, which is Foster's Auto Care Limited, 96 Church Road. Chair, if I can just um, refer members to the modifications uh, sheet, you'll see there's um, a little bit of additional text uh, which has been included, which seeks to amplify uh, a point regarding um, the economic um, uh, floor space uh, impacts of the, of the proposals. Uh, this application is brought before uh, the Planning Committee for Determination, uh, again, because objections have been received that are fundamental to the assessment of the proposal and which cannot be overcome by condition. And it's therefore not for officers to determine the scheme under the Council's scheme of delegation. Uh, the proposals entail the demolition of the existing bu business buildings um, and the erection of a four-storey block of 20 flats. Uh, the proposals follow er an earlier refusal of a mixed-use uh, scheme. And if I can direct members to page 56 of the officer's uh, report, you'll see the mixed-use scheme um, entailed 
uh, redevelopment to provide um, a small um, office on part of the ground floor, a number of parking spaces um, and uh, flats. And you'll see um, on page um, 56 and 57 um, various reasons um, for uh, refusal. What I would draw attention to is that the loss of the employment use um, on the site uh, was not cited. Um, in this instance, um, the uh, parking um, uh, issue, you'll notice uh, one of the um, factors that uh, was cited as a reason for refusal um, was parking, uh, but that was more of a case that the applicant had failed to demonstrate that there was capacity locally rather than an in-principle concern about the provision of parking um, on the site. Dealing with principles uh, in this um, particular um, case, if I can just take you to some of the, the photographs um, of the site um, as it exists. Um, the proposals um, would entail um, a, a loss of employment um, use. Um, it's uh, what's designated as one of the, um, or not designated, but identified um, as a scattered employment site. And you'll see in section seven, um, along with um, the additional comments set out in the modification sheet, um, uh, the officer's comments um, on uh, the whole issue of uh, the loss of an employment site um, here. Uh, the mode of business is changing. Um, officers and the applicant have discussed um, the existing use, um, which um, it would be difficult to integrate into a mixed-use um, development. Um, that, in turn, would uh, perhaps have prompted um, a B1 uh, use, a fairly innocuous use that could be um, a, a, a neighbour with residential um, uses. Uh, but again, officers are more than aware um, that uh, the council's key objective is to direct um, B1 um, office uses uh, towards the likes um, of uh, Wimbledon Broadway, Wimbledon Town Centre, uh, not uh, to sites um, like this. And you'll see from the officer's report um, that um, the vacancy rate on the um, boundary business uh, estate, um, which uh, adjoins um, the site, so that's just on the, um, uh, the right-hand side um, of uh, the photograph. The vacancy rate on the immediate um, uh, uh, business estate um, is, is significantly above the average rate uh, for uh, Merton. And to that end, um, officers are of the view that it would be difficult to demonstrate harm from the loss um, of the employment use. Against that, the proposals would deliver um, a significant number of new um, housing units. Um, in pre-application discussions, um, officers um, highlighted that um, if there were to be um, proposals um, brought forward, revised proposals um, that um, removed the employment um, uh, use, um, then the scheme would need to have um, good credentials um, to warrant um, its um, support. And in this instance, the proposals uh, would provide 50% uh, affordable housing, all of which would be for rent, thereby well exceeding London plan and council uh, targets. It's understood that uh, the applicant is in active discussion with Moat Housing Association, and although it can't be confirmed at this evening's meeting, um, it's uh, a possibility that they may look to take uh, the whole uh, development. Um, I say it's a possibility. Um, you may recall that a scheme was brought before committee uh, around 18 months ago for the redevelopment of the nearby site at 260 Church Road. And since the decision was issued, um, the scheme has been um, purchased by London and Quadrant and the scheme is being rolled out as 100% affordable housing uh, on that site. Officers consider the massing of the proposals uh, to be uh, appropriate. Um, again, there are similarities with the, uh, the other Church Road site, so a scheme which um, rises to four storeys um, but is set in from um, site boundaries. Um, the design has been the subject um, of um, considerable um, pre-application uh, discussion uh, with um, the um, architects' practice um, that have worked up um, this scheme. Um, officers have been um, conscious of the fact 
that there needs to be a balance struck between uh, providing modest garden and uh, amenity um, uh, space, um, but at the same time trying to provide um, sense, some sense um, of um, semi-enclosed um, uh, outdoor space. And in this instance, the proposals, as you can see, the windows are capable of uh, a degree uh, of opening, uh, but we have what are called uh, winter gardens uh, at the front um, of uh, the, uh, uh, the building. Um, this provides um, a degree of relief for the occupants um, of the dwellings, whilst at the same time balancing that with any noise and intrusion from uh, the busy main road, uh, which is at the front. And this um, proposal was worked up from uh, a scheme that the architects were directed to, uh, which can be found um, on uh, a road um, near um, New Malden uh, on the way to, uh, uh, to Kingston, where, where a similar approach has been uh, rolled out uh, with success um, there. In terms of um, standards, the, um, all the units meet um, the technical standards and provide um, amenity space which meets both the council's and London plan standards. In terms of daylight, sunlight and noise, um, the proposals um, fulfil best practice and the noise impact can be dealt with by condition. In terms um, of safety and security, uh, the proposals are um, alongside Fox's Path, which runs uh, along uh, here. Um, so quite a, a, a narrow um, uh, footpath. Um, and again, the design is such that it's been worked up to provide a degree of natural surveillance um, along the edge uh, of, that, uh, of that path. In terms of parking and servicing, uh, as I've said, the previous scheme uh, had provided a number of um, parking spaces um, on site, um, but there was uh, a concern uh, that the proposals could impact uh, on parking locally. The current scheme provides no on-site parking. However, the applicant has uh, conducted a survey of parking uh, locally and has um, uh, found that within a 200 meter um, uh, walk um, of the site, there are, eight, there are at least 80 um, parking spaces uh, available. Based on the most um, generous um, likely output in terms of additional parking, which could be provided uh, or could be generated by the proposals, the scheme would um, not generate parking pressure that couldn't be accommodated in neighbouring side streets. I should add that parking, um, or oh, sorry, car ownership uh, amongst um, different uh, tenures of housing type tends to be lower for the um, social housing um, stock rather than uh, market housing. So again, were the scheme to deliver 50% affordable housing or 100% affordable housing, the actual amount of car parking based on research undertaken by the Department for Communities and Local Government would suggest that even fewer cars uh, would be found um, on surrounding streets. Officers have further promoted um, more sustainable modes of transport by securing agreement with the applicant to five, five years car club membership for future residents. Servicing uh, of the site, um, officers identified that um, the uh, development had the potential, if servicing uh, was actually on the street, uh, to provide um, uh, a restriction to uh, the significant vehicle flows along Church Road. And so the scheme has been designed to incorporate um, a loading bay uh, to the front. This will require, um, uh, uh, or one of the aspects of the Section 106 agreement, uh, would be to provide for the footpath to run around, around the back uh, of the loading bay and for the loading bay part of which you can see actually encroaches into the um, applicant's site uh, to be dedicated uh, as public highway. Um, the, these matters would be covered under the, uh, uh, the Section 106 uh, uh, agreement. Uh, in terms of sustainability, the scheme delivers a high standard of sustainability and drives down carbon emissions. Uh, but doesn't meet zero carbon targets, 
but provides appropriate off-site carbon offset contributions. And the scheme is recommended for approval subject to a Section 106 agreement and conditions. Thank you. Rebecca Marchant, please. Uh, so I'm one of the residents of Sycamore Gardens and I also have some neighbours here with me and we represent the views of number 19, 20, 21, 22 and 24 Sycamore Gardens. We have small one bedroom terraced houses which are two storeys which will be back backing on to this four storey development. Whilst I'm not against the principle of redevelopment of that site, because it will improve the street scene, I am um, against these spe specific plans because of several reasons. Firstly, the proposed height of four storeys is significantly higher than our neighbouring properties and any other properties in the vicinity. Therefore, surely this is against the policy 7.4 and 7.6 of the London plan. Whilst you have proposed massing focused towards the centre of the building, the proposed roof terraces, which uh, as a result of this, are highly undesirable for our properties. These terraces would naturally attract noisy gatherings and parties, which would cause us significant harm in terms of noise and being overlooked. I can see some suggestion in your plans of screening, but this would mean requiring over six foot of screening, which is not really practical and also would defeat the object of massing towards the centre of the building. Our other major concern is parking. As you note, the last planning application which was turned down had eight parking spaces and this has none. This is a proposed development for 68 residents and it is highly unrealistic to expect none of them to have a car particularly families who will be living in the three bedroom properties which you have outlined on this plan. We are in an area of low public transport accessibility. We are, yes, close to the bus stop for the 200 bus. However, I don't know if any of you have ever been on it. It's the smallest, most awful bus that never turns up and is quite frankly an unpleasant journey. You have carried out a parking survey, however I think some of the areas in this parking survey have been misidentified. Just looking down our road in the evenings, there is not one single place to park, there is cars parked in front of driveways and quite frankly I don't know how you got some of the results of that. So it might be necessary to relook at that um, and you may have, have mistaken some aspects of the parking there. In Sycamore Gardens, we can't even afford one or two extra cars. Our driveways are already being blocked in and we are the nearest road on that side of the main road to this proposed development. Therefore, it is obvious that people would be trying to park in our streets. Another thing I can see in your um, thing is that you have proposed that the um, developer would have uh, put £4,000 towards a disabled parking bay in a different vicinity. This would likely be, have to be across the main road from this property, and I don't think that would be suitable for a disabled person to be required to cross this busy main road to access their property. Other things of worry are the recycling and refuse, as this has not been increased at all in this development, and this was an issue in the previous application. So these are some things that we need to address. It's really important for us not to be overlooked by this property, and I think four storeys would be significantly overshadowing our nice gardens. If anyone would like to come and see our gardens and how this would affect us, you're more than welcome to come round and have a look in my garden. Andy Hollins. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on this item. I am the planning consultant for the application. The committee report and the presentation by the lead officer robustly covers the planning case for the development, so I'll try and avoid a repetition and instead respond to some of the points made by the objector. In terms of height, the site can comfortably accommodate a four-storey building. The area has a mixed character area with variations in built form and height. Next to the site is, is larger commercial building on buildings. Am I popping in and out here? Sorry. 
I think my mic's a bit. Anyway, next to the site is a large commercial building on Boundary Business Court. So the north there is number 95. This is a two-story property, so there will be a step up as shown on the submitted CGI drawing, which was shown earlier. But this transition in height is not significant, and it won't harm the character of the area. Officers are also referred to the 2017 consent, consent for a similar four-storey development slightly further up the road at 260 Church Road. This site has a much tighter relationship with the surrounding environment with two-storey houses immediately at the side and at the rear. Loss of privacy. I note the objector is concerned about overlooking from two roof terraces towards the rear properties on Sycamore Gardens. The gap between the proposed terraces Sorry, this is really bad microphone. The gap between the proposed terraces and the northern flank edge and the rear of these houses is about 22 metres. This is a reasonable privacy distance. Overlooking onto rear gardens from neighbouring properties is also relatively commonplace, and number 95 Church Road sits squarely between the site and the houses on Sycamore Close. However, that said, I'm happy to accept the conditions for screening for the privacy screen and obscure glazing as suggested in the report. If we want to take it a step further, we can reduce further overlooking to agree to a condition for a submitted plan drawing to pull the balustrades off the side face of the building by 1.5 metres. There is room to do this and leave a decent sized terrace which still meets the London plan standards. The parking survey that accompanies the application has been reviewed by highways and officers have accepted its findings that demonstrate that on-street parking stress levels are under 60%. This is relatively low. There may be some localised parking problems on Sycamore Road, although it doesn't suffer from the highest stress levels. Also, prospective residents, or for those who will actually own a car, are more likely to go into park onto Foxton Grove, Horner Lane, Varley Way, Collingwood Road and Batsmouth Road. All of these roads are closer and easier to access and are far lower on street parking stress levels than Sycamore Gardens. Unfortunately, it hasn't been possible to accommodate a disabled bay in front of the site. We have tried, but due to the proximity of the pedestrian crossing, this isn't possible. However, the 106 agreement will secure a bay, and this is most likely to be opposite uh, in Putworth Road, um, and it will be available for all Blue Badge owners to use, uh, which is probably an improvement. Um, the bins, we provide an integrated and recycling refuse store and the council's waste officers are satisfied that the size of the store and method of storage is acceptable. Finally, I hope members can favourably determine the application tonight. As detailed, Moat are an afford, prefer, afford preferable housing provider and they are on board with the development. Thank you. I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you want to say anything? Please. Um, Chair, um, can I just make clear... Uh, the uh, application site where the hand is moving and which is um, dotted red is separated from the back gardens of Sycamore Gardens by first Fox's Path and then by the commercial um, units with um, the rear uh, additions and the yard uh, beyond. So the application site doesn't adjoin the back gardens. For the sake of clarity, where the hand is at the moment, and then going over towards the back of the nearest um, property, the separation distance is around 21 uh, metres. From this corner um, of uh, the site to the back um, of this property, if you can see where the hand is, is moving, the distance is around 31 metres. The council has in the past adopted separation distances of around 21 metres between um, habitable rooms uh, and habitable rooms to ensure adequate um, privacy. And allowing for the fact that we have a ridged roofed um, building with a back addition here, which is 21 uh, metres uh, away, and we have a separation distance of 31 metres here, I would um, suggest that um, privacy um, is something which shouldn't reasonably form uh, a reason for refusal. There was um, mention of um, the disabled um, parking um, bay. Uh, again, I think it's important to perhaps just pause for a moment and, and, and think that people with disabilities or people that are registered as disabled aren't necessarily 
always the ambulant disabled. There's perhaps a tendency to, to, to think of people with, with disabilities um, as, as being those that are uh, the ambulant um, disabled, but that's not all uh, disabled um, people. And again, in terms of this particular um, scheme, um, the building regulations um, provides um, for um, both, it's a, three, it's a three part assessment of uh, accommodation uh, meeting the needs of people with disabilities. 90% um, of these units would be accessible and 10% um, of uh, the units would be fully accessible to people with disabilities. And it would therefore meet one of the key standards in the Mayor's Housing um, SPG. Um, so I think those things need to be factored in when considering uh, the pros and cons uh, of accommodation and how it might actually fulfil the needs of people with broader disabilities. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Makin. I just say that the, um, the building between the edge of the property and the shops that you've got on that, that thing are not four storeys high. Therefore, the people from the top floor are going to be able to see into Sycamore Gardens, but the others aren't. In fact, looking at that site, the view from the third floor is not going to be is going to be affected quite a lot by the chimney if they want to look into Sycamore. Uh, on on the fourth floor, they're not going to be able to see into it anyway. I wouldn't have thought. Um, but even so, can we put a condition on the application about? obscuring the window or the view anyway on on that bit chair um if i can take members to um page 71 um of um the agenda. Condition 5 says before the development is first occupied, the windows at first floor level and above in the northern side elevation shall be glazed with obscured glass and fixed shut to a height of 1.7 metres above finished floor level. Councillor, um, uh, sorry, uh, Officer Lewis mentioned that. This has been sold to London Quadrant. Uh, the previous yeah, the previous time. So, are we having fifty percent or one hundred percent affordable? The application before you this evening is proposing fifty percent uh, affordable housing. That goes above and beyond what the council's um, thresholds are. However. Officers understand that the applicant is in active discussion with moat housing, and if moat housing were to purchase the development, then being a registered provider, it would deliver 100% affordable housing. And that was very much the situation with London and Quadrant on the site at 260 Church Road. Councillor Dehaney. Uh, possible to point us to the area of waste storage on the map you showed us a while ago? If you can see where the hand is circling on the yeah. on the ground floor, That's uh, really we've got uh, an area identified for waste, uh, waste no. um, storage, that and that would be immediately next to um, the uh, proposed servicing bay, which officers have negotiated yeah. with the applicant. Okay, thank you. Um, oh yes, on page 70, you talk about nine of these would be on an affordable rent basis. It's either 10 or all of them should be. Is that, presumably that's a typo in the top line? Any uh, other questions? Sorry. Um, the other question is, 
given that moat don't have any presence in Cricket Green, can it be suggested that the developer approaches London and Quadrant rather than moat, because moat would only have those properties there and that's it? Or is that... There's that nothing to do with planning. We can't no. Any comments? Yes, if we contrast this with uh, one for one, the Broadway, we were told uh, there's no possibility of any affordable housing. Um, we're not going to say no to this, are we? But our, our, the aim of our policy is to in ensure a distribution of affordable housing across the borough and not only in one, one, one area of the borough. So, you know, bigger picture, I think we need to, to be aware of the tendency with the present pressures and the use of viability assessments to, in effect to exclude affordable housing from one part of the borough and um, to attract housing associations to areas where, where the cost of, of land is lower. Yeah. Um, no, uh, I'd like to put a condition on it that um, something be done about pram shed storage because um, pram storage, like you have cycle storage for, for prams basically because they're, they block pram storage so and, and cycle storage in some ways we haven't got there didn't seem to be anywhere on here that says cycle storage but if there is then I'm missing it can we add prams to it as well for any development over <coughs> over two stories. Chair, I, I think the, 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 the units do include storage. How somebody chooses to use that store um, would be down to them. And if they had a child that should go in a pram when they're out and about, perhaps they might choose to put the pram in the store. But what I would say is that the layouts are designed to include storage. So storage is, is provided, but I think it would be beyond our, our, our scope to insist on pram storage. Okay. don't want an answer, but I think there should be street trees in front of this. Okay. Chair. Um, Bit of landscaping. When, when, I, when I visited... There are two street sorry. There are two street trees which are which the, the, the loading bay has been positioned so as to enable the street trees um, to remain. So I mean, it's, it's 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 not shown on that 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 image. But if you look at fine, we're with it. Yeah. Okay. So no so those two are retained. Comment, sorry, um, can we move to the vote now, cool. please? Those in favour, please share. Unanimous. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Can I say something? We all know that there's a new uh, development on the church road as well. Those people are going to park on the Boston. Um. Okay. Okay. Miss Russell is not back. <laughs> Would you mind just, yeah, I think we have to really press on. Okay. Okay, so our next agenda item is agenda item eight, which is 110 Gladstone Road. Thank you, Chair. Members, the site comprises a um, mid-terrace house in Gladstone Road. Uh, the site's not located within the conservation area. Um, surroundings are residential. This is the existing house uh, site at the moment. 
Um, so mid terrace property um, has some single story rear extensions which adjoin neighbouring property to the north. Um, obviously with a rear garden here. Existing garden has a small shed at the back which is to be removed and some small trees which will also be removed as part of the scheme. That's the shed on the left there. The proposal itself is for uh, an outbuilding at the back garden following demolition of that small shed. Um, the outbuilding is proposed to be used as a home gym. Uh, the outbuilding would be constructed of timber with glazed panels and a green roof. Uh, proposed site plan, you can see the outline of the building at the back here with garden remaining in front. Um, this is the floor plan, so um, showing gym equipment um, to be used um, obviously by the homeowners. Um, you'll see it goes full width of the garden. Uh, the roof it is a, a shallow pitch roof with a ridge um, over this part of the of the building, so not centrally positioned. Um, a section through the the plan, um, so you can see the pitch roof going up here. Um, the neighbouring property to the north does have a single story flat roofed um, outbuilding at the back garden as well. This is the proposed front elevation, so glazed doors. Uh, timber panels with some glazing in the roof here and a, a green roof proposed up here on this part of the roof. Uh, the height of the building will be three metres to the to the pit, to the ridge, uh, two and a half metres to the eaves height. At the back, so there is a, um, a private access way at the back. Um, they are proposing to put in a, um, a door that would have access to that alleyway. Um, rights of access over that that would be a civil matter as it's not a public right of way. Side elevations. So the building itself, um, this would be viewed from property to the north, you could say. So um, the existing outbuilding at number 108 to the north is here. So the proposal would be two metres deeper in length um, in comparison to that outbuilding. The other side, there isn't an outbuilding present. And so that's the elevation that would face the pack of that garden there. Site pictures, um, this low-lying hedging and, and trees here would be removed to make way for proposal. That's a small shed to be removed. Um, you can just see that the roof of the neighbouring outbuilding at 108. Um, as outlined before, the eaves height would be 2.5 metres, which would be similar to that. The roof ridge coming over, and it would also be 2 metres coming closer towards the um, person taking the picture. And that's just showing the boundary treatment on the other side. That's just showing the um, existing house and various additions to the property in the next door. Uh, members, draw attention to the update sheet. Another further representation received. Um, but overall, it's a, an out application for an outbuilding to serve an existing domestic property, which is considered to be, to be acceptable in terms of its impact and design. Um, and therefore recommend conditions um, and to be granted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christine O'Shea. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure at this stage we're all flagging, so I'll try not to keep people too long. Um, I wonder if we could go back to the Ordnance Survey map, which I think gives a truer representation of the density and depth of housing uh, in the immediate hinterland on Gladstone Road. And those of you who are familiar with the area will be uh, conversant with how different it is to the density and depth of housing on, for example, Hartfield or Graham Roads. Uh, and uh, those of you who have been familiar with the street for some time will also be aware of events at uh, individual properties such as number 95, uh, where there's a reasonably substantial uh, dwelling purpose uh, building to the rear of that property. Can anyone hear this? Sorry, is this... Am I too close? Sorry, sorry, okay. Sorry. Uh, so I suppose one question that's begged is the quantity of applications that are coming in under planning for, for, uh, to Merton as a local authority in respect of outbuildings, whether they're called granny flats, sheds, or whatever other exotic moniker might apply. 
Um, I have tried oh, since March to give a bracing and sufficiently rigorous treatment of some planning issues, including the access, permanent, separate and independent, which is provided along the alleyway, thereby increasing the attractiveness of this structure for um, uh, additional rather than ancillary use to the main dwelling house. The site orientation, the solar maps that were provided in March to uh, confirm the ruinous consequences to our own amenity of outside space by proceeding with this. And of course, some people say that the magic number is three. Um, we've come to the view that it's more like 15, as in 15 square meters. The fact that this um, building will exceed 15 square metres means that it's massively more attractive for additional as opposed to ancillary activities, that it must uh, comply with building regs, uh, including fire regulations, particularly now that they intend to attach on to the pre-existing structure at 108, and also opens up the prospect of use for sleeping. But I suppose our greatest single concern is the fact that um, there appears to be new material information, uh, by which I refer to published statements on the Merton planning website from the applicant about the inherent disturbance created by the use of this structure as a hum home gymnasium, the stated intention to use it at antisocial hours, by which I mean very early and very late hours, as documented in their letter of the 17th of June, and uh, the proposal for conflict between activities, whereby they reference themselves the extent to which it would impede uh, children sleeping. Um, so the, the depth and height of the shed also directly impact on a specific pinch point within our own property. But uh, I would just like to thank you very much, Chair, and the elected members and officials for entertaining correspondence and affording us the opportunity to speak here okay. this evening. I'm am sorry. I out? Sorry. I am going to have to stop. Grant. Thank sorry. you. Thank you. Received quite a lot of correspondence from you. Thank you for that. Yeah, we will, Chair. Um, yes, in terms of the the outbuilding, it is to be used um, obviously by the homeowners um, or the family there. Um, it is an uh, ancillary outbuilding. Um, it is set at the back of the garden. Um, and although it has a, a higher roof height than, than your outbuilding next door, um, it is the ridge is set away and the length of two metres greater down the side there um, is not considered to be to be harmful in planning terms. Um, in terms of antisocial use, um, we have applied the standard condition for such a building in the garden um, to be used ancillary to the to the to the home. Um, should people use it for um, antisocial purposes, noise generation, there is the environmental health legislation which always remains in place where you can contact environmental health should noise become, um, become a, an ongoing matter um, where they can commence some investigation proceedings there. Um, just to confirm, I have, I have looked at your, your emails you sent me this afternoon and, and earlier um, and your pictures from your property as well. Sorry to interrupt you, but we do give um, the public three minutes to speak, and we have done that. So I don't have any additional n n names down here for speakers, and we do need to move on. I'm sorry. Can I um, move to questions, uh, members? Sorry, Council Southgate. Yes, we've got the dimensions here. Can we? be told what uh, percentage of the garden area this takes up. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, just some calculations this afternoon on the on the scheme. Um, existing garden area measured off plan, 14 metres by 5.05 metres, gives a square metres of 70.7, and the proposed outbuilding is 25.2 square metres. So taking up 35.6% of the garden. The questions, please. 
Councillor Dehaney. Are they going to, it's going to be used for a gym. So obviously they're going to be a wash basin, toilet facilities. How is it? Have you gone into this to see exactly, exactly what they're going to put in it? It's just not the, the four walls. They're going to have a wash basin. They're going to invite their friends, families to come and use it. And just have some facilities like a wash basin, toilet, toilet. It's not just it's not just um, a built a room where they just get and use the gym for a couple of hours. <laughs> Friends are coming in, family members. Um, yeah, so the, the floor plans it's not showing a um, a toilet facility or shower facility proposed in there, um, but it would you know it could be used as any. Um, Typical ancillary outbuilding within your within your garden, so it's got to be ancillary use to the to the existing house. Um, if they have a visitor um, once in a while, that that uses it. Um, the, the question is, does that materially change the use? But if someone you know, if someone came to visit and happened to use it once they stayed there, um, it, it wouldn't be a change of use, for example. Um, If there's no sink or toilet, it's highly unlikely, isn't it? Questions, please. Councillor Dean. So, being that this has already been extended already, if this building was appended to the house, uh, would you reject this application? So, what do you mean by appended to the house? Um, if they asked that this building uh, was part of the house, on the basis it's already been extended through permitted development, bearing in mind how many metres back it would go, would you reject this application? Um, well, it's to be used as a home gym, but we um, conditioned to be ancillary use, which is a typical condition for such a building. Um, so if they use it for storage, um, a, a playroom, for example, we, we can't, we think it'd be unreasonable specifically to be used for, for a home gym, per se, but... Um, so it can be used as ancillary to the to the main house. On the house, if this was on the house. You, this is um, no, but I have a second question. I have a, I think there's only one chairman, if you don't mind. There's only one chairman, and I uh, will listen to you, chairman. Um, so how many metres back is the permitted development, and how many metres is this, and what's the total? So under permitted development legislation, you can have an outbuilding up to two and a half metres in height, total height, um, where it's within two metres of your property boundary. So uh, this proposal is three metres to the to the top, but two and a half metres to the side here. So the, the reason it needs planning permission is because of its half a metre in height above extra, so. Any other questions? Councillor McGrath. Thank you, um, just a couple of things. Um, am I right in thinking that what you were saying on the subject of noise is that we can't put any restrictions in on noise because they'd already be covered by existing environmental laws so there's no point in us trying to put in any anything on noise because it's already there in essence okay and um, I am a bit concerned about 35% of the garden it seems an awful lot so can I just check that what you're saying is if it was very slightly smaller in height it wouldn't need planning permission at all was that what you were saying yeah so if um if the whole building was two and a half metres in height, um, it's, no, I can't guarantee this, because the permit development assessment advice to go through elements of the legislation, but off the top of my head, it wouldn't need permission if it was only two and a half metres in height in total. Sorry, it, please don't interrupt. Thank you. Could we have no, comments then, please. Any comments? Councillor Dean. Uh, I think uh, this is one of those grey areas 
where uh, we have uh, additional development in gardens. And we've seen them here before over the years where um, you know, they, they have uh, presented a reason for why they're being built. But frankly, uh, in this particular instance, um, a gym may be used half an hour a week, maybe two or three hours, uh, and to spend substantial sums of money, tens of thousands of pounds, I imagine, on a gym is, is, is quite surprising. And it does set a precedent because essentially if every house and every garden um, could extend their house by this much, um, and we have a number of these uh, which somehow people start to sleep in without doubt, uh, it's extremely hard uh, to eradicate them. I don't actually see that this is going to be uh, what is proposed. And bearing in mind it already has permitted development, and if this building was part of the property, um, it would be rejected. And it's taking up the same space as if it was appended to the property. And I think we do need to make a stand here. This is about uh, aggrandizement in terms of increasing the value of a property um, that will either be let out or rented out, but it doesn't add to the amenity of the residents. And I'd like to see it rejected tonight um, because you know, gardens are there. We keep talking about environments and climates, etc. And I think it's right that we uh, back up what we say in council and we should reject this. Are there any other comments? Yes, Councillor Henry. Well, I just, I think for health, I think it's important. I mean, I am a gym person and also I think, I don't know what the person lifestyle is and what their family lifestyle is, but not everyone can go out to the gym and if possible they may have a older person at home who may need access to exercise. I think that's something really good and that's my reason for saying yes, I am, um, you know, I'm with the, the, the planning and I, I hope um, we all look into it and thinking it's for good purpose. Are there any other comments? Councillor Jay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Is it possible to have a condition that uh, the applicant cannot apply for a change of use uh, from a gym to residential in the future? Um, no, that we, we couldn't impose such a condition. Um, we put on the standard condition to be used ancillary to the main house, which means only the occupiers of the property family can, can use the building. Um, so that's, that's what we think is appropriate um, in this case. Um, yeah. Councillor McGrath. Um, I mean, I do think we have to consider it as a gym. I think people go to the gym for extraordinary amounts of time, you know, and I think the idea that it's only half an hour, half an hour a day is, is not true. Um, but I am very concerned about the size of it. It does seem to me it occupies an awfully large percentage of the garden. And so that's, that's my biggest concern. Um, on this issue about other uses, so are we saying that if, if for example, people, people wouldn't be able to sleep in it, that would, that would be against the planning permission that we, if we grant it? Is that what we're saying? Can I just be clear about that? Um. It, being an, and conditioning to be ancillary means they can use it you know, ancillary to the main home. So if they put a uh, put a bed in there, as long as the person sleeping in there is um, uh, living at, as part of the family of the property, then they could. Um, I think, chair, if 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 need be, I think if if you if you want to tighten it up, which I think is I get a sense of what where we're going with this, um, they have put it forward as a home gym for that purpose and that's that's what they've wanted um, throughout this application and the previous one which was withdrawn but it was withdrawn because of the height we weren't happy with the height and the scale of the building um, the um, so if you like you can change that condition say to be used as a home gym or, or storage only if, if, but not yeah I, if, that, I, if that helps I would like to propose that chair yeah. that's a condition I, we, yeah, I think there's enough evidence around to 
prove that it's not only going to be used for a gym, it's going to be used for other purposes. But then we're only making an assumption here that this developer won't stick to the conditions that it's a gym. So we can't, you know, turn it down merely because we think it can be used for other purposes. So, I, you know, I'm all in favour of it. Okay, Councillor Ward. Um, I want to speak absolutely against um, any extra conditions on saying it must only be a gym or storage because you just don't know, and that's a condition that would go on for a long time. It's, I'm, we, we don't know anything about, and it's not part of planning conditions. Our, our proposal is about what the family intend to use it for. They said they want to use it as a gym. Maybe they do now. Maybe in the later date they have children and they want to convert it to a playroom. And we would say, no, you're not allowed to do that because we've said it's definitely got, only got to be a gym. It's a it's basically a very large shed at the end of the garden to be used ancillary to the rest of the house. And as long as it doesn't become, um, you know, and a, an extra bedroom and they don't start putting, you know, like I said, the plumbing and, and a spare toilet, it's, it's not an extra bedroom, it's not an extension, it's basically a large shed which they want to use as a gym and if they want to use it in future as a playroom or anything else or just storage, they should be allowed to do that. It's, a, it's it, it's just a large shed at the end of their garden and, and a private residents should be able to do what they like with it. Okay, I'm going to move to the vote. Um, if, it, if it goes ahead without condition, if it doesn't, then we'll add conditions in. So let's, let's put it to the vote as, the, as it stands. Okay, so the recommendation as it stands, those in favour, please show. Those against, then the, well, not voting, then the recommendation is carried. Saying then that that uh, condition is added. Yeah. Without any conditions. Thirty-four to forty links Avenue Morden. Um, Councillor Najib has to leave at this point. Okay. Thank you. Chair, this application is being brought before uh, the Planning Applications Committee for determination because of the number and nature of representations received in response to public consultation. Um, the building as it stands um, on uh, the site uh, currently provi provides um, four flats in a two-storey flat-roofed um, interwar building. Uh, the new semi-detached dwelling which is being proposed uh, would be on the northern flank, so that's the new building would be here, that pr provides the, the, the extra dwelling, um, and then um, on top of the enlarged building would be uh, the roof extensions. Um, the uh, mix uh, of new units uh, is described at paragraph 3.6 of the officer's report on page 113. Uh, you'll see from uh, consultation that a number of objections have been received um, and they deal with loss of privacy, outlook, design, insufficient car parking and impact on the value of surrounding properties and I must um, flag up that impact on property values is not material to the assessment of a planning application. In terms of the principle of uh, the development, um, it's a highly sustainable location uh, which is um, evidenced by the um, high PTAL score um, of uh, the site, so uh, a site suitable for uh, more intensive um, use. Uh, in terms of the design uh, of the proposals, you'll see that um, uh, an examination um, of the merits of the design uh, commences at paragraph 711 
um, of uh, the officer's report. And the officer describes how the building, um, in their judgment, would enhance the appearance of a building that has little architectural merit. And if I can just flip between, this is the building as it is, this is the building um, as um, proposed. Um, in terms of visual impact, the distance um, of the proposed extensions from uh, neighbouring uh, dwellings in Hatherley Close um, is uh, around um, 20 to 21 uh, metres. Um, the uh, proposals would be separated um, not only by the gardens at the back of the properties in Hatherley Close, but there's also this little um, service road uh, that runs along uh, the back um, of uh, the properties. I visited the site because I think my initial reaction was that these buildings would in fact have a new building looming up right at the end of the garden. But in fact there is this gap and then it's perhaps not quite so easy to see um, on this. But if you can see the little green shrub or tree um, symbols, you'll see that where the hand is moving up and down not only is there the little service track which separates um, uh, the backs of the properties in Hatherley Close, but there's also a gap at the back of the existing building and the proposed extension, which is from where the hand is moving from left to right here, would be set further uh, from uh, the boundary uh, again. So, uh, as I said, the, the officer's judgment is that the proposals wouldn't have a harmful um, visual impact. In terms of daylight and sunlight, uh, the applicant has conducted um, a robust um, daylight uh, analysis um, and uh, whilst it does um, indicate that there would be some loss of natural light, um, the um, uh, impact is comfortably within acceptable tolerances. In terms of uh, amenity space, sorry, in terms of um, uh, um, standards, both internal and uh, external standards uh, would be met. Um, the units that are proposed would be dual um, aspect. Um, parking would be retained on site, so you've got one, two, three, four parking spaces. Um, and although uh, the scheme uh, would increase the number of units from four, sorry, um, would increase the number of units um, on the site, the four parking spaces would be retained. And with a high PTAL score, um, officers consider there'd be no meaningful um, impact on additional parking pressure locally. Um, there's adequate space at the front of the site to provide for um, refuse um, and recycling. Um, there's um, space um, for um, cycles. Uh, in terms of sustainability, uh, the proposals uh, would and could be conditioned to ensure that the necessary standards uh, are met and approval is recommended subject to conditions. Thanks any um, speakers for this um, particular application so straight to questions no questions goodness me I think comments then <laughs> Councillor Southgate I couldn't believe you wouldn't say something about Merton Park um, yes it is in my ward albeit only just and the existing building is is forlorn and unlovely sort of nestling up there by the railway embankment. Um, and this, okay, I know CGI can tell you anything, but uh, it, it does look a vast improvement. And I, th I think my only point of concern is about the uh, separation from the rear of properties in, in Hatherley uh, Crescent. And it does seem to me that just about meets our minimum criterion. So whilst that's not entirely comfortable um, it's it's certainly not grounds to to refuse it and and it's um, I don't believe the PTAR roaming rating for a moment but it, 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 there are, there will be parking provision and it's otherwise going to be permit free so we shouldn't have problems with um, parking pressures uh, being added to locally so all in all yep in favor Any, any other comments? Quick trip. I think this is a vast improvement on the existing building. So I see no reason why you know, we shouldn't object. 
we should object to it. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mind living in it, then it's completed. <laughs> It's one of the ugliest buildings in Merton. We should be jolly pleased to get rid of it. So, yes. <laughs> okay. so, let's move to the vote. Those in favour of the recommendations, please vote. Unanimous. That's unanimous. Thank you. That's accepted then. So, now we've got planning appeals to note. We've had two allowed, three allowed, and the remaining one, two, three... Four, five, five dismissed. Um, can we note that report? And agenda item 13, which is the enforcement report, again to note. Are there any it's issues? The well. Oh, yes, there's an, a modification sheet actually amends the burn bullock item. Um, yeah. Let's have a look. Where is it? Yes, it's on the page three. Uh, that, that's been updated. So, yes, questions. Yeah. The question is... Uh, ...been uh, uh, complied <laughs> with, given that they paved over the path they were told not to, and they were told on, the, uh, on this enforcement notice to dig it up, which they haven't done. All they've done is built a wall in front to stop cars going on it. But the path is, the garden has not been restored. restored. Um, how they managed to get notice has been complied with is beyond me, given I walked past it this morning. Can I make a suggestion? And that is you put your views in writing um, to enforcement. Yeah. Um, and I hope to see that reflected in the report. Yeah. Are there any other issues on the enforcement report? Anyone else? Okay, then that concludes the meeting. Thank you for your attendance.